weeks ago on Monday Night Football, the Kansas City Chiefs rumped over the Buffalo Bills. They dominated the game with the basics of football. It's the way they've been winning all season long. He's known as the Nigerian Nightmare. A devastating 260-pound running back named Christian Okoye. I more so run straight forward. I don't get involved with uh, uh, joking and, you know, going sideways. I think that's the way it should be for somebody of my size. And that's why I take it. Derek Thomas is the dynamic leader of this attacking Kansas City defense. Although no team in the conference has given up fewer yards than Kansas City, the quarterback sack is the identity of this defense. The sack drives and motivates our team. The emotion that comes after a sack, the jumping up, the high-five, and everybody's running to you to congratulate you on the sack, I think that's what fuels our defense, and yeah, I think it carries over to the offense also. It's one of football's fiercest rivalries, the Raiders and the Chiefs, on ABC's Monday Night Football. Football boogie for you. Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to roll? Are you ready for the Raiders and the Chiefs if they go so so? We're gonna make you smile and get rid of your blues. Monday night football boogie for you. Football and it's time to play. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Los Angeles Raiders versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Brought to you by Miller Lite. It's it and that's that. By Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Federal Express, all around the world, our most important package is yours. And by Stanley. Since 1843, Stanley has been helping people do things right. Kansas City, Missouri on a beautiful night for football here in the nation's heartland. Kansas City, a city turned on by their Kansas City Chiefs. Just outside Arrowhead Stadium, they've been tailgating most of the afternoon. And inside, a capacity crowd on hand, a noisy partisan Kansas City Chiefs crowd of nearly 78,000 as tonight the Chiefs play host to their longtime rival, the Los Angeles Raiders on Monday Night Football. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford along with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Glad you're with us. This should be a good one, a good AFC West matchup. It's the Los Angeles Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. Both are at 5-3. and three. Whoever wins tonight will be a half game behind Denver in the AFC West. These two teams met the first time over 30 years ago. It was a long-time rivalry with a lot at stake for many games, and both fell on hard times in recent years, but they both returned to prominence a year ago. The Raiders won the AFC West with a 12-4 and four record. Two of their losses were to the Kansas City Chiefs, who went 11-5 and five under Marty Schottenheimer, and they also went to the playoffs. Earlier this season, the Kansas City Chiefs got off to a slow start, and then they went four in a row before losing to Denver last week, but they are a hot team right now. Well, well, what can you say, Al Michaels, about the Raiders, other than they're playing Raiders football? It's not pretty, but it... Well, it's just win, baby, win, and they're doing that. That's been their theme, Frank. And not only have they won through the years, they won so dramatically. Think back to who has engineered their victories through the years. They have been engineered by the grand old masters. In the early 70s, 
George Blanda, who seemingly was 100 years old, would come off the bench and lead them to a stirring comeback. And then in the early 80s, Jim Plunkett, who seemingly was nearing 100 years old, had his career resurrected, and he led them to stirring wins and two Super Bowls. And in between, there was Ken Stabler, who, because of his lifestyle, looked like he was 100 years old, who led them to some great wins. Now there is a new Raider grand old master, but oddly, he plays on the other side of the ball. He is Ronnie Lott who was picked up off Plan B from San Francisco two weeks ago, intercepted a pass in overtime to lead them to a win over Seattle. Last week, two fourth-quarter interceptions. They come from behind and beat the Rams. He and his defensive unit are the keys to a Raider win tonight. Anytime, Dan, you've got two old AFL teams, it's special, but uh, this is extra special. Yeah, you're right, Al. And I think back to some of those rivalries you talk about. You know, it might be LaMonica and Dawson in a passing duel, or maybe Willie Brown trying to cover Otis Taylor, or Stenerud uh, involved in a, in a kicking battle with Blanda. Tonight ought to be another installment of that. A, a couple keys for Kansas City here tonight. Offensively, if they get their play-action passing game going, they ought to have some success against the Raiders. The Raiders' two safeties, Anderson and Lott, are their number one and number three tacklers, respectively. They love to come up and hit on the run. They might get caught too close if Steve DeBerg is slick with the ball. Defensively for Kansas City, quite simply, it rests on two guys' shoulder. J.C. Pearson and Albert Lewis, the two corners. They're a little bit nicked, and they've got to cover the fastest wide receivers in the league. Can they do it hurt? Arrowhead Stadium on, at the moment, a very balmy night, though they do say a front is headed this way, and there is a chance of rain before the night is done. Jeff Jager to kick off for the Raiders and back to receive for Kansas City that's Harvey Williams the rookie standing in the middle at the goal line and the kick in the direction of Williams who fields at the three and Harvey brings it back to the 19 yard line he is tackled there by Derek Cruda and now a look at Kansas City's offense guided by Steve DeBerg in his 15th season last year, a tremendous year as he led them into the playoffs. This year, a slow start, but he has been coming on. Okoye and Jones start in the backfield. Thomas and Barnett, the wideouts. Hayes is the tight end. Alt, Zott, Grunhard, Lutz, and Baldinger have done a fine job, and they have stayed injury-free, working very much in tandem and effectively. Off the play fake on first down, it is deflected at the line of scrimmage the fake to Okoye Howie Long put the pressure on and may have gotten a hand on it and let's take a look at that Raider defense anchored on one side of the line by number 75 Long, Golick, Davis and Townsend who leads the team in sacks Moss is the ex-Tampa Bay Buck Ellison the ex-49er and Benson and then you've got McDaniel and Washington and Ronnie Lott and Eddie Anderson are the safeties Troy Stratford is split to the right for Kansas City on second and ten. Stratford, a one-time running back, wearing number 25. And Okoye takes it straight over the right side and up to about the 24-yard line. A gain of five, and uh, Scott Davis makes the stop, and we've got our first little skirmish, and I can guarantee you it won't be the last of the evening. Looks you know like uh, Dave Zott and Eddie Anderson, Frank, uh, mm -hmm. the first two guys at it tonight. And it will, for sure it won't be the first one. I think Kansas City wants to come out and do what they did against Buffalo, and that's just run the football if they can. And, and well, the Raiders offer a pretty good opportunity. They're 15th against the rush in the league. They've had trouble against the rush, and if Marty Hatton sh shot memory has his way, that's what they're going to do tonight. Third and five for Kansas City, the game's opening drive. At the 24-yard line, Todd McNair is their third down specialist, number 48. They send him out into the pattern, and he catches the pass at the 30, and the third down specialist provides a specialty as he is tackled by Winston Moss. First down. Well, when McNair comes in, there's no question who they're going to look to first. He has 17 receptions. All of them have come on third down, but you say, well, why can't they cover him? Well, they've also got to cover the extra wide receiver. They try to cover him underneath with linebackers, and... As you can see, Winston Moss just couldn't stay with him. First down, Kansas City. 15-yard pickup. 
10 a milestone completion, 2,500 completions now in DeBerg's 15-year career. Flags, there was a motion. I think we had a ball. false start somewhere up there on the line. Play ruled dead before its inception. Referee tonight is Tom White. <laughs> False start on the quarterback, pulling out early, prior to snap, five yards, still first down. As we have told you in the past, even quarterbacks forget the snap count. You see Steve DeBerg start to come out. Ten guys knew when the ball was coming up, and he did. But did you see the little confrontation there between Tom White, the referee, and, and Ronnie Lott? White actually kind of motion for Lott to get out of the way. First and 15, good protection. Harvey Williams takes the swing pass, brings it back to the 40-yard line, which is the original line of scrimmage. Ellison and Lott converge on the tackle, and let's go back and take a look at the situation that Dan just described. Now, remember, the, the whistle had blown right away because of false start. Oh, I see. Tim Barnett comes up and gives Ronnie a little shove, but Lott must have been complaining about it after they separated because he was pushed away by the referee, but that's what precipitated the whole thing there. The man asks for none and gives none. And not unusual to see Ronnie Lott, the 11-year veteran, yeah. trying to intimidate the rookie, Tim Barnett. Second and nine. Benson on a blitz, and it's tipped and caught by Townsend. And Townsend is inside the 10, and Williams, I believe, saves the touchdown, but no. One official says, I think he got in. The referee, White, does. Touchdown. He carried Williams across the goal line three or four yards. But Townsend having a spectacular year, coming off a Pro Bowl year of a year ago, deflects the ball, gets his own deflection, and... The question or not will be whether he crossed the goal line before he was ridden out of bounds. I thought the official on the sideline had the much better angle. It was the referee coming in from the side who made the call. They'll probably take a look at this upstairs. Well, first of all, it starts off with Townsend making a great read of Williams coming out of the backfield. Now, let's watch the feet. Yeah, he's out of bounds well before the ball, I think, crosses the goal line. At least it looked like from that Boy. angle from behind. But one, before we get lost on where he went out of bounds, what a marvelous play by Townsend. He saw Harvey Williams cross his line of sight, stopped his pass rush, floated a yard or two to the outside, and made the interception. There's you a better look at it now. There, he's, the knee is the down, the ball the is not over. It's a touchdown. We had him crossing the goal line. He does not touch the sideline prior to doing that. The play is being reviewed. Well, they'll respot this ball back at the one or two yard line, maybe even as far out as the two, but Nonetheless, what a play by Greg Townsend. Yeah, we showed you that in slow motion, but in regular speed, uh, I'm sure you saw it like we did. It was just incredible. It's hard to do that. That ball had a lot of velocity. He deflected it, and there is the foot out of bounds. Ball obviously has not crossed the goal line, and they should bring it back. This is a very difficult call for the replay official to make. You can see, and clearly, he's out of bounds, but exactly where is the ball as he goes out of bounds? Well, it's not across the goal line. Well, that's the best look right there. It, it was a foot, a foot and a half short of the goal line. Watch Here's, this now. There's the play initially. You see how he altered his course after he saw Harvey Williams there, number 44, going to his outside? We and have you know what? On the play. This is a pretty good run. You can hear the, the reversal being, being announced. The ball on the one-yard line. First and goal. Yeah, they're going to spot it at the one, but that doesn't in any way negate what Greg Townsend did. That's a, just an excellent play. Yeah, he's had seven sacks already this year. What a force he's been after his first Pro Bowl last year in his eighth season. So the Raiders' first offensive play of the game is at the Chiefs' one. Now, the Raiders this season have scored only one rushing touchdown, and that was last week by Nick Bell, the rookie from Iowa. Jay Schrader is the quarterback, and they have Bell in the game. They would normally start praying that Steve Smith, the fullback, and Bell, the rookie, the ball carrier, and Bell is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dino Hackett, the first man to hit him. I will say this, Al, uh, that first and goal at the one dramatically increases your chances of getting a rushing touchdown. Yeah, there was a little loss on that play. Yeah. Uh, Bell is in there for obvious reasons. The rookie from Iowa is a 255-pound running back. 
Let's watch the work in the interior of this line. Now, this is all Reed. 56 is Dino Hackett. Bang. The collision, and Bell stopped right in his tracks. Second and goal against Smith, the fullback, and Bell, the big bruising tailback. Fake to Bell. Schrader throws. Incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Ethan Horton. He was covered by Albert Lewis, shaking off an injury he sustained early in the season, playing sparingly until now, but a starter tonight. Lewis played again sparingly last week against Denver, but then he was forced to play the whole way when his counterpart on the other side, Ross, was injured, and Lewis is all over the tight end, Ethan Horton. That came close to drawing a fly. Well, you better play it tight or not play it at all. Exactly. And Lewis is one of the best, maybe the best at man-to-man -man football there is. Third and goal, and they give it to Steve Smith, and Steve Smith is not in. He didn't get close. Okay, a tough decision right now for the Raiders. Do we take the three against a team that really is three points near the goal line? Three points goes a long way in this game. Tracy Simeon yeah. was the man who hit him first. He comes off the field. The Raiders send in their field goal unit. And Dan's point well taken. This yeah. promises not to be a high-scoring game. Neither team team is a high scoring type of football team so three is awfully important this is shorter than an extra point the ball will be spotted at the nine Jeff Jager to attempt it and it's good and so the Raiders who as we said have gone half the season with one rushing touchdown can't get it in on a first and goal and it is demoralizing any way you look at it to have first and goal at the one and only get three points Raiders on top, 3-0. And Jay Schrader on the offense, unable to get a yard. They settle for the field goal after Townsend nearly runs it in for a score. And that cheap defense did its job. Yeah, you could, you could say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we may look back at that little three-play series by Kansas City's defense and realize that it was giant. Jager's kick. Williams has to go over into the corner to take it at the three. And he's pinned there at the 13-yard line, tackled by Dan Land. This is the second interception of Greg Townsend's career. The other, he ran back 86 yards for a touchdown three years ago, and he almost runs this one back. And it's a four-point piece of hustle by Harvey Williams. I mean, Harvey Williams could have looked the other way, maybe could have come a little slower than he did. That hustle translated instantly into four points. The difference between the Raiders having seven, the Raiders having three. Of course, he got a lot of help there from his defensive teammates. But that was fine work by Harvey Williams. He was the intended receiver. When Townsend intercepted it, he came back and saved the touchdown. Steve DeBerg and the Chiefs from the 13-yard line. They give it to Okoye. Gain of four. You'll see a lot of that tonight. You'll see a lot of play action passing. By the way, that interception was the first pickoff of the Berg in his last 90 passes. So he had a pretty good string going. And only the fifth of the season. Last year, incredibly, he had four all year. Unbelievable. And over 440 attempts. But their passing game is really high percentage. So much of it is play action. Will you look at that? I mean, that is a remarkable stat by the Chiefs. Not a single touchdown in nine possessions inside their own territory. Second and five, and Okoye gets met at the line of scrimmage and pushed back. That was Ricky Ellison, who hit some low, and that's the way you've got to hit somebody like Christian Okoye. Ellison, the former 49er. What was uh, Christian's soundbite there in our tees? I don't like to mess around with juking when I can go straight ahead. <laughs> it was kind of hard to juke 260 pounds. He's got a point. It was also an incredible speedster at 10.15, and I can't get over that in the 100 meters when he was at Azusa Pacific. He is the ultimate north-south runner. Third and five, McNair is in the game. 48 again, the third down specialist. There's Watt up there. Out of the shotgun. DeBerg under pressure, and DeBerg has it batted away. Oh, that's a it may be ruled a fumble 
If it is, it will be a safety because the Chiefs apparently have yep. recovered, yep. and that is what it is. It is a safety. Tim Barnett was at least able to save five points by getting there first. Ruled a fumble. And Marty Schottenheimer, who's an opponent of instant replay, I think right now is going to is hope he gets a break. I don't think there's a break <laughs> coming on this one because the arm did not look like it was coming forward. And you can see DeBerg, he is looking up to the replay on the scoreboard. His arm is going back, actually, when he is hit. Yeah, that's a fumble and all the way. Aaron Wallace comes in on the blitz. And look who's uh, look who almost got a touchdown. Greg Townsend almost had it and let it get away from him. Townsend so close to his second big play of the game. A big effort early on here by the Raiders defense. Ball batted away by Wallace. Townsend over there hustling almost gets the touchdown. And give Barnett a lot of credit too because Barnett was actually out in a pass pattern and had to race all the way back into the end zone to recover it. A, a fairly miserable start by the Kansas City offense and yet they've made two I mean two colossal mistakes and it's only cost them five points. Stop and think about this. If Townsend runs his interception into the end zone, if it's not for Harvey Williams, it's 7-0. Mm -hmm. If Townsend is able to gather in that ball right there, it's 14-0. In reality, it's only 5-0. And the worst part of that scenario, Dan, is Kansas City is not a team that plays catch-up football. Well, and they could have easily been 14 down instead of the 5 they are. Uh, I know it's hard to be happy if you're Marty Schottenheimer, but it, it, when you look at the two errors that have happened, uh, this is as good as it gets. Only trailing by five. Well, the baseball season may have officially ended last night, but the score here is five to nothing. And five runs would have won about four <laughs> yes. games in that series. Yes. Of course, following the safety, yeah. you put the ball in play from your own 20-yard line, so the Raiders are going to get good field position, and there's Townsend on the sideline. I guess we offer congratulations to the Minnesota Twins, mm -hmm. the world champions, and to our friends over at CBS. A great series. And to the Washington Redskins. Barker. Puts it in the air. That's a great kick. Fielded by Tim Brown at his own 17-yard line. Uh -oh. And the one-time Heisman Trophy winner out of Notre Dame takes it back to the 46, where Barker, the man who kicked it, makes the tackle. Well, Tim Brown has really come around. He had that terrible knee injury back in 1989 and just kind of worked himself back into shape a year ago. And every time you see him, he is more like the Tim Brown that came out with that Heisman out of Notre Dame doing it as a pass receiver and a return man now. Craig and Smith start in the backfield. Gold and Fernandez, the wideouts, Horton, the tight end, and there's the offensive line, Don Mosbar, excellent. As always, the center, number 72. On first down, it's to Fernandez, who makes the catch and picks up about eight, but there's a marker down back at the 38. J.C. Pearson covering on the play. I think there was a false start. I don't think the play ever even happened. Number 88 offense. Fire to the snap. Let's go first down. That's Ethan Horton, the guilty party. Chiefs, they play a base 3 4. Neil Smith having a fine year. Sally Amour, the man in the middle, and Bill Moss, the veteran. Then the linebackers. Martin having a terrific season. Simeon, Hackett, and of course, Derek Thomas led the league in sacks last year. Lewis is back from his injury. Pearson on the other side with Ross out. Porter, and the venerable Duran Cherry are the safeties. First and 15. At the 40, 5 0 Raiders. Craig can't go anywhere. And the Chiefs say, Welcome to the AFC. Kevin Porter led the greeting party. 8 25 to play in the opening quarter. Well, it looks like the Kansas City offense thought the game was going to start at 9 30 Eastern rather than 9 o'clock Eastern, but uh, the Kansas City defense knows what time this game was supposed to start. These guys are here, and they're here big. Raiders have rushed the ball three times for zero yards. Eight minutes to go in the quarter. Five nothing Los Angeles. Second and 15. Trader buying time. And then, in effect, throws it away, even though Craig was in the neighborhood. Neil Smith levels Trader back at the 20-yard line. Credit that to just good coverage downfield. Coming out of the backfield, Roger Craig was picked up and covered well. And deep down, they were looking for Fernandes. He also was covered. Schrader just no place to put it. And there is Craig coming out of the backfield. 
Really, and he's Lewis open, is though. right with him. The ball just kind of floats on him, Frank. Well, when you have an Albert Lewis <laughs> out there, you're very cautious. One of the best man-for-man -man defensive backs in the league. Third and 15, and Derek Thomas has come limping off for Kansas City and appears now to be holding his hand as well as being gimpy. Third and 15. Trader throws, caught by Fernandez. A first down. Goodbye. He's inside the 30. He's inside the 20. Pearson has an angle on him, and Pearson shoves him out at the one and a half. Wow. Ooh, Kansas City got caught in the zone, and Fernandez worked just a little turn in. Right, we about got 15 a... yards down the field. He was wide open. Schrader with plenty of time. A little partial rollout. Number he got 66. some good protection. Reporting his eligible. A, a classic blow by the Kansas City secondary. Two guys. Look at the two guys going downfield. Pearson and Lewis. Both to that side. One of them should have stayed with Mervin Fernandez. You see Pearson there, number 24. He saves the touchdown, but one of those two guys made an error and let him go. 59-yard pickup off a third and 15, and Schrader stumbles, gives it to Bell, and Bell gets in for the touchdown. So that was not a work of art. When Schrader almost fell down. Bell gets hurt, but Bell gets it into the end zone, and for the moment, it is 11-0 going on 12. And this would be a killer for the Raiders because Marcus Allen is still on injured reserve. They've got Roger Craig, of course. You know about Bo. He's rehabbing in Alabama. And Bell is going to be their main man. But he was clutching at his hip after the, after the play. You could see where he took a shot from both sides. There is Marcus Allen. Albert Lewis the came up and put a shoulder right on the right hip. He sure did, Frank. Uh, Nick Bell. And that's right where he was clutching when he went down. You're right on. It's that right shoulder of Albert Lewis. Look at it from here. Here comes Lewis from the right side. Actually, he gets a shoulder on both hips. I think Lloyd Burris to the other side put his shoulder pad on the right on the hip bone on the left side. There's Lewis, and there's Burris on the other side. As we talked about Marcus Allen, he probably won't be available for a couple of weeks. They'll bring him back after the bye, and of course... Everyone knows that Bo Jackson is not around. And what a difference a year makes for these Raiders without Marcus and without Bo. But that's and a very Bell promising right. sight right now as Bell goes off. Marcus in the role of cheerleader. One reason they, they kept Marcus out of tonight's game, it's on turf. They have an off week next week. And then they're on the grass against Denver. And I think that's a smart play. You, you buy two more weeks of getting this guy ready. And... Obviously, with Bo Jackson uh, uh, not playing football this year, Marcus Allen is going to have to be the guy to carry the, the Raiders through the months of November and December. As he really did last year, he had eight rushing touchdowns the last half of the last season. And the money is on the line. You would like to have this man around. Marcus getting up there at 31 and still has the moves and still wants to play. Well, this whole thing came about because of a defensive error in the Chiefs' secondary. Kevin Ross... It hasn't dressed for tonight's game, the Pro Bowl cornerback, and J.C. Pearson is starting. Albert Lewis is at his old spot on the left side, but one of those two made an error that released Mervin Fernandez, and that's the big play. Pearson has been playing on the left side for Albert Lewis while Lewis was getting ready to come back, and they moved him over to the right side because they lost Kevin Ross. He injured his ankle last week against Denver, and they didn't want to go with him this week. He couldn't practice all week, so they're going to try to get by tonight without him. Jager for the extra point. Jeff Gossett, who's their punter, will hold it. And the Raiders have that pick blocked. Bill Moss blocks it. I'll tell you, you've seen some weird things happen already. I know Halloween's coming up, but some strange things have already happened here on Monday night. 11 nothing. Goal line stand. Safety. Touchdown. Blocked extra point. 11 nothing. How do you figure this? One of the best kickers around. That says enough. <laughs> I mean, come on. 
<laughs> That's what working out at the club every day will do, huh? Well, he should have a little random testing, I think, there. The club bonga bonga. I hope nobody shows up in the booth with three bottles. <laughs> Chiefs have it at their own 20-yard line. First and 10. Raiders on top, 11 to nothing. Here's a Koye, and he gets tripped up on a great tackle by Scott Davis. And Goldick says, nice going, Scotty. Second and nine. Next week, will be at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia where the Giants who blew that 13-0 lead last night to Washington are now 4-4, four and four, taking on the Eagles. And Rich Kotite got good news today when Jim McMahon was able to walk into his office and say, I'm okay, so it looks like McMahon will start Monday night. Giants-Eagles a week from tonight. Second down, call at 8 from the 22. Here's Okoye again. And he's able to knife through and get out to the 26-yard line. Dragged down by Anthony Smith. It'll be third and four. Now I mentioned the loss of Emil Harry and Stefan Page, and it would have been ordinarily quite a quite a disaster. But Tim Barnett, the rookie out of Jackson State, has really come on. Number 82, the rookie wide receiver. Bad news for the Raiders. Nick Bell is hobbling off the field and back in there he is into the <laughs> Raider locker room accompanied by Dr. Rosenfeld the orthopedic surgeon for the Raiders so it appeared Bell would be okay but at the moment probably done for at least the half third and four the bird throws and has the first down well a late flag back up field by the quarterback J.J. Burton makes the catch well, and this, this came from the umpire Oh, and here you go. This one's going to go against the Raiders, but it, it was first down yardage anyway. There's Dave Adolph, the defensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Raiders. Illegal use of the hands to the head. Number 75 on the defense. First down. How we lost. An offensive player isn't allowed to do it, and neither is a defensive player. He's working against 76, John Alt. Alt in great position. <laughs> well, I guess he was called for having the left hand on the face mask. We certainly couldn't see much of it there. We were partially screened with that angle, but didn't look like a lot. Ticky tack. First down from the 32-yard line. That's made by the rookie Barnett. He's up to the 39-yard line, tackled by Lott. If that name's familiar, Barnett, Fred Barnett of the Eagles, the second-year receiver we'll see next week, is his cousin. The Berg on play action, and Barnett, they laid off Barnett. He just hooked up a little bit on Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott has to be... A little cautious back there because against this play action, you're allowed to see Ronnie Lott up there like a linebacker. But that time, Barnett gets good yardage after he catches the football, and that's what he excels at. Here's Okoye on second and three, and Okoye pulls his way to the Raider 47-yard line, leaving bodies in his way. Why juke when you can go straight ahead? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what the Chiefs needed, though, to get back to their game. They were, it, was, it was a mess there. In the early going of the first quarter, everything went against them, and all of a sudden now they are able to move the ball with their big fullback, and that is the Kansas City game. They establish the run game, and then they play action and get their pass game going. Benson, 54, I mean, just bounced off of Okoye. He put a hat right in his chest, and there's mistake number one. Do not ever attempt to tackle him from the waist up. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Barnett. Another first down. Takes it to the 34. Tackled by Winston Moss. That's twice Barnett, who is a good runner, a good return man, has made the first man miss. And instead of stopping Bar uh, Barnett for a four or five yard pickup, he slips the first tackle. That time it was Lionel Washington. And he gets the first down. He's just an excellent runner after he catches the football. There is Washington missing. Washington, ordinarily a pretty good tackler, but Barnett is a fine runner once he gets the football. Three.
315 to go in the quarter. 11-0 Raiders. Okoye can only bounce for two to the 32-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Nick Bell taken back to the Raider locker room. They are x-raying his ribs. And that really hurts the Raiders because now they're down to Craig. Steve Smith is more of a blocker. Napoleon McCallum is another running back, but he's more of a special teams guy. And that's it. I think it kind of changes what they will have to do with Craig in there. Craig uh, is not the power runner that Bell is, of course, but he can do a lot of things. He's a good receiver out of the backfield, and he can take it wide for you. Second and eight. Oh, yeah. The the going deep, but too deep. Intended for J.J. Burton, the speediest of the chief receivers. He was able to get out in front, but the Berg overthrows him. He got by McDaniel. Well, he is the fastest of the wide receivers, and he did have a, a little bit of an edge on Terry McDaniel, I believe. Here he turns it on straight, and all of a sudden now, the Berg sees him open, and he's going to be very careful. He doesn't turn it over with everything else that's happened thus far in the first quarter, and he overthrows it. 227 remaining first quarter 11 to nothing Raiders third and eight for the Chiefs at the Raiders 32 yard line shotgun four wide outs pass over the middle is incomplete intended for Thomas a bad pass behind him McDaniel covering and Ronnie Lott forced it and he also hammered to Burke Ronnie Lott came up late after DeBerg had lost the opportunity to change the play and forces DeBerg to hurry the pass and is incomplete and DeBerg gets a lump out of it. Kansas City wants to take a timeout to decide what they will do here. If they bring in Lowry, it's about a 49-yard field goal and a little bit of a swirling win. 11-0 LA. Nick Lowry is kicking on the sideline. It is fourth and eight. They have chosen for the moment not to attempt a 50-yard field goal because of the breeze, and they line up to go for it at the 32-yard line. And oh. the third tries to get the Raiders to commit, and they do. He has a free play, but it's incomplete. Intended for Thomas, Aaron Wallace was the guy who jumped, and if he jumps, that's five yards. It still doesn't give them a first down but it will make it a 45-yard attempt for Lowry instead of a 50-yard attempt. Well, he was he was obviously in the neutral zone. He was well across. Oh, and a great head motion and hard count by DeBerg. All sides, number 51 defense, five yards, will replay fourth down. You know, everyone on that defensive line has been saying during that timeout, now let's don't get any penalties, let's don't get offsides. And there's number 51, Aaron Wallace, going for the hard count of DeBerg. They're still not going to kick. I mean, they're still going to go for it. This is odd. Now, you would figure they would have done that to get Lowry in a little better position. He's ready, but Schottenheimer says, no, we're going to go for it on fourth and three down by 11. His career best is 58, so if you're worrying about distance, forget it. You don't want to the win. Or else you wonder if there's not something wrong with Lowry. Exactly. Fourth and three. The Berg throws, and it's dropped at the 26-yard line. Tim Barnett was there Winston Moss was covering well DeBerg put it there but he had a lot of velocity on it well, I'm not sure Barnett was even looking at it and Barnett if he did he just took a quick look he was more concerned with the coverage and Moss was the man with him and here comes Lionel Warshim and now watch number 99 that's Winston Moss grab him right there but more than that he just he just distracted him from concentrating on the ball we see him with his hand right on his waist. Not enough to draw the flag, but enough to distract Barnett. Oh, that would have drawn the flag in a lot of places. But Great. it didn't draw one here. Strange sequence as they turn it over on down. First down, Raiders from the 27. And now Strader looking for an open man and finds Ethan Horton, the tight end. He is chased down by Thomas, and the linebacker makes the tackle about 50 yards down the field at the 21-yard line. Hey, the Raiders love to stretch it. They had two deep receivers. Fernandes was deep. Galt was deep. But Ethan Horton, their tight end, a former running back, drafted by Kansas City a few years ago, 
has been a prime receiver, and he can take it deep. But no pressure on Schrader. It came so late. There's Derek Thomas, who is across from Horton initially, holds him up, rides him well down the field. Well, you would expect that he loses pressure it. on DeBerg at that point. I mean, DeBerg had all the time in the world to find Horton. Schrader was decked at the end of that play by Moss as he finally released it. This is Steve Smith taking it down to the 17-yard line with one minute, 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And the Raiders on top, thanks to their defense and a couple of big plays, 11 to nothing. Second and five at the 17. <laughs> Weird. Six yards on the ground, 111 through the air for the Raiders. Second and five. And no play, no play. I'm still scratching my head over that last sequence with Kansas City and them going for it twice on fourth down and not attempting a field goal either time. That's well, the last one would have been a 45 yards, and it's, you kind of wonder about that. All start. 66 offense. Five yards. Still second down. Moving prior to the snap. I, I agree, Dan. I, it has to be local knowledge more than anything else. The wind is swirling. Maybe they know something that's not apparent to anybody else. Yeah, it, when you look at Lowry on the sidelines uh, doing his practice kicks, he didn't appear to be favoring anything or it didn't appear to be a physical problem with Lowry. Second and 10 after the penalty back at the 22. Trader throw it. Picked off by Pearson at the 14-yard line. He has only Trader to beat. And then Schrader is able to slow him down. Horton gets there to tackle him out of bounds. Derek Thomas hustled up and got in front of J.C. Pearson. But then Pearson elected to just step out of bounds rather than cut back to the middle of the field and try to make something happen. Poorly thrown ball by Schrader. You know your cornerback down in that red zone is be go going to be up there close. Galt made a square out. He threw it late. And here comes Pearson. Hit Thomas. Yep, he's taken Schrader out of it. Yeah, he sure did that. But when you get down close in that red zone, you are going to have your cornerbacks playing much tighter. And Pearson was all over Galt. The ball delivered a little late by Schrader. Big break for Kansas City. And the Chiefs come to the line of scrimmage and take a timeout. Another one. I mean, that's a, that's a real strange timeout. There are 12 seconds to play in the quarter. The clock isn't going to start anyway because it's a change of possession. The Burke called the timeout and then put his arms up in the air as if to say, what do I do that for? We'll be back. There's a level of service with which you're already quite familiar. Only now you can enjoy it at 35,000 feet. Delta's person-to-person -person service to over 270 cities worldwide. At Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. After that timeout, a worthless timeout for the Chiefs. They now have one remaining in the half. On first down, the Berg throws and the catch is made by Thomas is a marker down on the other side of the field at the 34 yard line. Line of scrimmage with a 45. Well, I think that's going to go against, go against Lionel Washington. Completely away from the play apparently. Uh, he just grabbed one of the Kansas City Chiefs it, it was receivers either, coming downfield. It might have been Andy Anderson. Was one of the two. Illegal contact. Number 33 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. He was slid off, Frank, out here in, in Washington's position. But he uh, he yanks him pretty good. Look at the bottom here. The very bottom. That's Anderson. And he just puts the old horse collar there on Fred Jones. And the end of a strange quarter.
Halloween quarter, 11-0. We'll return with Monday Night Football after this message and a word from our ABC station. Here's a reminder, this Saturday, 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central and 4 Pacific, the Tour Championship. Live coverage of the richest event in golf. And then those games coming your way, college football regional coverage, Florida Auburn headlining our assortment of games coming your way this Saturday. Barry Word is in the game as the running back in this set, and that's Barry with the ball. And he picks up about two to the 31 as we start the second quarter. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Saturn, a different kind of company and a different kind of car. And by the new dollar rental car. We're right on the airport, right on the money. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Kansas City, second down and eight. Chiefs at the 31 yard line. And Kansas City working without a huddle here on this play. Christian Okoye is the running back. No huddle, but they've taken 30 seconds off the play clock. Okoye to the 29 yard line, where it'll be third down and six. Stop by Townsend. Weird score and some weird numbers coming your way. Well, we've had a safety, we've had a defensive end, Greg Townsend, come up with interceptions. Six yards rushing and 111 passing for the Raiders. And uh, those 111 accomplished on Traders' only two completions. One was 59 yards and one was 52 yards. Third and six, Kansas City at the 29-yard line. McNair is in the game, number 48, as always, on third down. The Burr goes the other way, hits Barnett, loses the football after he had picked up the first down, but they are saying it was down at the 22-yard line. Ronnie Lott is going to run all the way to the end zone, or close to it, but this won't count. They're calling him down at the 22-yard line, and they will say the whistle blew, and the bird is shaken up. He's the grabbing grabbing his down, down, and they're definitely going to look at this. But the bird, more importantly, he's clutching his right arm. He's grabbing his throwing arm. Well, they can look at it all they want, but if the whistle blew, that's the end of the play. That's that. And I heard the whistle. Well, we used to think that. All right, right there's Barnett. Barnett. Let's watch it. There's the left Rolling knee. on the fail. Play is over. Completed pass. Down by Konzak. First down. And I think that was a, uh, a great look. That was a good look at it, guys. I think that's pretty definitive. The play is over. And a quick decision, too. I like that part of it. Knees down. Boom. And then the ball comes out. But let's not forget that Steve DeBerg was holding his arm. Here's Okoye running laterally for one of the rare times this season, taking it to the 18-yard line. Picks up four, second, and six, and here is what happened to Steve DeBerg after Lott had scooped up the fumble. Well, he got into it and tried to make a tackle on Lott, and then he just fell on the elbow. And it could be that that elbow is sore, and when you... When you go down on this carpet, sometimes you can just bang that nerve, and I'm sure many people have done it, and it hurts for a while, but he obviously is shaking it off. If it is the nerve. Second and six, 12.30 to play, first half, 11 nothing Los Angeles. A play off the quick count, first move to the 12, and that's close to a first down. And if he stays on his feet, close to six. First down. Right now, you wonder if the Kansas City game plan isn't to go at the Raiders with Christian Okoye and then try to get the big play from Harvey Williams, and that's what we might see right now because Okoye has come out of the game after that run, and Harvey Williams, clearly the man who will become the feature back in the Kansas City offense, has entered the lineup. What a great change of pace they are, too. Williams is so quick. He has size, too. He's 222 pounds, but he is much quicker and he can go laterally much better than Okoye. That's McNair in motion. Williams has been offset and takes it to the eight-yard line where Winston Moss makes the stop. Gain of about three. It'll be second and seven for the first and eight or so for the touch. 
Winston Moss, they picked him up from Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay changed their defensive alignment, and so Moss became available, and he fits right in with the Raiders on a nice job, steadily and quietly in an outside linebacker spot. Yeah, Jonathan Hayes, one of the better blocking tight ends in the NFL, was trying to keep Moss from crossing his face and getting inside, and Moss just took the slant, beat him there. A play back in. How do you miss him? Second and seven. Caught by Jones. Touchdown, Bill Jones. And only his 12th reception as the Chiefs cross up the Raiders. Bill Jones, who has no attempts rushing the football, he is the big ball in front of the running backs, McCoye and Williams. This time, they use him in the flat as a receiver, and he hangs up six. And as you can see, the Raiders certainly not thinking Jones is going to work out of the backfield. <laughs> Nick Lowry for the point after Brian Barker to hold. 11-0-3. Remaining in the half. Oh. The Rams did the same thing to the Raiders last week with their backs coming out of the backfield. half in Kansas City. Raiders on top, 11-7. Again, Denver on top in the AFC West, 6-2. And, and each of these teams, 5-3. and three. So the winner is a half game back, and the loser is a game and a half back. Boy, well, there's a headache coming. Everybody's wearing gloves, he says. Lowry to kick off. Jamie Holland takes it from the three. Boy, the ball came loose to the 24-yard line, but Todd McNair with the jarring hit, it will still be Los Angeles ball. Oh, and he really uh, popped Holland. I can't thank Craig Janoff, our director, enough. That is such a marvelous way to look at a kickoff return. I well, mean, that's good. These teams have been meeting since 1960 as you take another look at the hit. That's McNair. Oh, it looked like the ball was out before he hit the ground. What a great shot. What a great hit. That Raiders. ball was out, but it ruled down, so that's all there is to that. Whistle blew, end of play. First down Raiders at the 23-yard line. Pray for a couple. These teams have been meeting since 19... 60, two original AFL teams. Another look at the hit. It was the Oakland Raiders against the original Dallas Texans. It's been a storied rivalry, some very memorable games, and this one, at least at the outset, has the makings of another one. Yeah, I think they first played in Keysar Stadium, San Francisco. It was with the Dallas Texans and the Oakland Raiders, right? Well, times have certainly changed, and when you look at this stadium with 80,000 people here all wearing red, uh, this game has come a long way, and so has its rivalry, but an awkward beginning, and if you're Kansas City, you can't be upset with where you are right now. Second and eight, Fernandez makes the catch and drags Pearson for a first down up to the 38-yard line. You know, this is a matchup I talked about early on in the game. You got Pearson with a bad big toe. JC's got a bad big toe on his right foot. Albert Lewis, the other corner, his st he's still bothered a bit by a sore knee. And Kevin Ross, their Pro Bowl corner, isn't for playing. So the pressure on Pearson, the pressure on Lewis by Fernandez Galton Brown is immense. And I think uh, their ability to cover and compensate is the most critical part of the Kansas City defensive game plan tonight. First down, LA at the 38, 9.25 to go in the half. Raider throws for Fernandez and incomplete. And Fernandez was covered by a linebacker, Dino Hackett. Moss, meanwhile, came in and Dex Schrader as he released. 
Kansas City that time in one of their rare zones that they've used tonight. You'll see it just drop back, and Fernandes taking it deep, and Hackett just picks him up out of his zone, tries to stay with him, but it made it tough for Schrader to get it in there, and Schrader had to hold on to it on that deep crossing pass, and he gets popped by Bill Moss. Second down, 10. Raiders from the 38-yard line. Schrader throws to Horton, the tight end. Nice catch to the 44. Well, here's real bad news now for the Raiders as Horton gets into a little shoving contest with Martin. Al Ocasal of the Raiders is telling us that x-rays have revealed three broken ribs for Nick Bell. Well, he really got sandwiched down on the goal line. You saw it earlier. Lewis coming in from one side, another defensive back coming in from the other side, and they both hit him at exactly the same time. So Bell clearly done for the night. They are down to Craig, who will have to be the main man. Smith, basically the blocking back, and McCallum if necessary. I guess the Raiders, Al, are down to doing something they really don't want to do. Throw the ball downfield to their wide receivers. Boy, that's, that'll really displease Schrader. And it'll change the offense a little bit, but remember, Roger Craig has still got a lot of football left in him. He can take the ball to the outside, and he's a dangerous receiver on the little short routes. Rolling on the field, completed pass, it is being reviewed. Before it is third and four, they take another look here. And where did the field come into play on this catch? And I think that Horton just tries to lunge forward and get more yardage out of it. I mean, you could see the ball, you could see the ball hit the field. Now, in my mind, Horton had control of the football, but nonetheless, it did touch the field. But it sure looked to me like the ball wasn't loose, wasn't being juggled. He appeared to have possession. Just trying to stretch it for another yard. The ruling, I guess, will be whether or not the field aided him in, in retaining possession of that ball. Another look again. It looks like he has control and just lunges forward. He kept the ball off the ground for quite some time. There's another look at it here. Well, if they rule the field aided him, they're going to overturn this. That's, that's well, real close. Uh, that would be tough I, to turn that over. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Frank. I couldn't turn that around. The operative word? Inconclusive. Tom White is the referee. Again, Al Sabato is the replay official. 8.39 to go in the half. Raiders on top, 11-7. to 7. Gentlemen, both got their jobs in 89. Schottenheimer coming from a lot of success at Cleveland. Art Shell, the Hall of Famer. Big year for him. He went into the Hall of Fame in 1989. He certainly is the antithesis of Madden on the sidelines, though, isn't he? John, very demonstrative, up and down the sideline, shirt out. Art Shell spends the vast majority of the game with his arms folded and a rather placid look on his face. I mean, uh, but another Raider, they're all oh, through yeah. and through. After further review, the play stands as called third down. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I don't think we know any of us saw enough to turn that over. That was a good effort by Ethan Horton. Third and four. And the referee is now explaining to Schrader that the play clock, which had gone down to 11, will be started now. Third and four. Over the middle, has his man for a first down. It's Roger Craig, who's caught more passes than any running back in the history of the National Football League, and he takes it to the 46. It's an anomaly in a way. Craig has caught more passes than any running back in history, and the Raiders throw less to running backs than any team in the league. Well, I think with Bell out of there now, they'll come back a lot. I mean, he works so well out of the backfield, and they can't do some of the things they wanted to do with Nick Bell. Do the things you can do well with Roger Craig. First and 10 at the 46. Craig again. Craig to the 40-yard line and banged the back by Kevin Porter after a gain of six. Roger is over 7,000 career rushing yards and over 4,500 career receiving yards. 
just a remarkable career of course well publicized after the great years of San Francisco came to the Raiders as a plan B player second down and four from the 40 yard line here is Steve Smith and he's hit down close to a first I think he's a little short Hackett and Cherry converge on the hit you saw that graphic on Craig and it may have piqued your interest four guys in history with 4,000 yards rushing 4,000 yards receiving two of the others are Lenny Moore and Walter Payton and that would figure the other you'd win a lot of money on in a bet Tony Galbraith well, Tony is around for a long time there it is New Orleans Green Bay interesting quartet they're gonna measure here and they are a little short of the first down it's gonna set up third and ages at the 37 yard line with 659 remaining in the half and Los Angeles leading 11-7 Terry Rabisky, who is listed as the tight ends coach, but is in effect the offensive coordinator of sorts, kind of. Well, really they don't list it. an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator. You have to kind of work it out. Well, let's put it this way. He calls the plays. Mm -hmm. uh, from where I come from, that makes you the offensive coordinator. Third and injured. And Schrader's going to go deep for the open man, Steve Smith, for the touchdown. The fullback, Steve Smith, that's only his ninth catch of the season. 37 yards as they trick the Chiefs and go up by a score of 17-7. to What a scheme on that one. They get the running back coming out of the backfield, working against the linebacker, and you'll see the hook up here. That's Dino Hackett trying to stay with the running back, and you can forget it. He's not going to do it unless he has some help. And here comes Smith. Didn't even get bumped coming around. And he was beyond Hackett, three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. And it was a sprint that Hackett was going to lose all the way. Jager's extra point is good. And the Raiders have their 11-point lead back. 6.43 left in the half in Kansas City. 18-7, Raiders. Trump returns tomorrow. Halloween night, Roseanne, that's redundancy. Yep. Speaking of returns, here is Harvey Williams returning Jager's kick from the 5 to the 30. And they'll spot it at the 31-yard line. Chiefs will take it there. Crudup ran him out of bounds. 6.33 left in the initial half. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Chiefs have been very tough at home this year. Halloween coming up. What is it? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. That looked, that looked like my pumpkin. I... Tried to cut the eye hole in and I ripped up the nose. <laughs> Bad pumpkin. Oh, you'll always be our pumpkin, Frank. Come on. <laughs> first, first and ten from the 31. Pass is low and it is ruled a completion on the field. Barnett makes the catch. Lionel Washington looks over as if to say, uh, are they going to look at that upstairs? It wasn't, wasn't getting many affirmative votes. Side yeah. judge now overrules yeah. and says no. They weren't getting many affirmative votes from the Raiders sideline. They're still saying no. And this time, Barnett at least had a couple of Raiders up there covering him. They have been getting away with this, Kansas City have. Has dropped the entire first half. A little hitch to Barnett. Second you can see it in from the 31. Here's a Koye. Logs his way forward to about the 35, where Winston Moss makes the tackle. We come down to six minutes remaining in the first half. 18 to 7 Raiders. Four on the play. 
Schottenheimer let go by Cleveland. Marty has come so close to going to the Super Bowl. Twice he's taken teams to the AFC Championship game. Both times with Cleveland turned back by Denver. And the year before they started the Super Bowl, he played with Buffalo, the AFL champs. And had there been a Super Bowl that year, they would have gone. Third down and six. The Berg throws to McNair underneath. And McNair fights his way toward a first down, but is knocked out of bounds by Ronnie Lott. And Ronnie Lott saves the first down. By about a yard, if I was to guess from up here. There's always a very audible difference when Ronnie Lott hits somebody and when someone else hits them. But right there, if you were going to say who got the best of that, it was probably McNair. But nonetheless, the Chiefs have to punt. Lott had to come a long way to get to McNair, and then he had to take on McNair from the side. And he was very fortunate he could get McNair out of bounds. And there are few who could do what Lott did right there. That was, that was just brute strength. This is the first punt of the game. Brian Barker to put it in the air. End over end, wobbly short kick. Tim Brown at the 25, escapes McNair and runs it back out to the 31-yard line. So Barker's kick was 36 yards and the run back was six. And the Raiders have it with 4.56 remaining in the first half. LA by 11. Coverage of the PGA Tour's richest event begins Saturday on ABC Sports. I always wanted to go to England. So when they asked me to go over there to the Lotus track and test the new Saturn, I couldn't wait. I figured a day, maybe two, and then I could sneak over to London, see Big Ben. We put 100,000 miles on that car. You'd think in the six months it took, I'd have gotten to know England pretty well. I did. At least seven and a half miles of it. David Rayborn came to Italy to write his first novel. How to be a young and impoverished American in love with Rome. But now, the characters are all too real. I'm gonna change all the names. Nobody's gonna be recognizable. And the events too close to the truth. I told you about Operation Morrow. Nobody. I made it up. He's a fiancé. He's dead. With it. I can't help you. Year of the Gun, rated R. Starts Friday, November 1st. For those of you looking for the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft in a light beer, we proudly present cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light. Also available in 12 ounce sizes. Davis, who is the embodiment of the Raiders. Nailing that nail. Since 1963. And a very candid conversation with Al Davis is our halftime feature tonight. First and ten for Los Angeles at the 31-yard line. Beach Bulls bounding through the stands as Schrader hits Horton. Whoa. Horton loses the ball at the 40-yard line. For saying and down. it is say the official on the spot is ruling that it's down at the 39. Well, he was down. It came squirting out after Horton was on the carpet. The official was right on top of it. Ruling on the field. Complete a pass. Player is down by contact. Look. Second down. Calling it live, it looked as if he, he'd lost it clearly before he was down. Now... Horton spins, gets a shot from the side, and it does look like it came out, but you can forget about it. Play was whistled dead, and that's the end of that. And it's Craig uh, trying to get those two yards. Craig in the backfield with Steve Smith. Steve Smith was the ball carrier, and he's very close as we widen out, and you can see where the sticks are. He was tackled by Dan Salia First down. Have a look at that Horton play. Raiders get a break. No doubt that it came out early. One official, the umpire. Simeon coming in from 
his linebacking position knocked the ball free. First down, Raiders from the 41-yard line. Schrader throwing after the 49-yard line. That's Horton. And remember, Horton's the guy who the Chiefs drafted number one as a running back in 85. And the Raiders had him, and they cut him. And typical of the Raiders, who like to turn running backs into tight ends. They did it with Todd Christensen. They did it with Hewitt Dixon, Derek Jensen, uh, Billy Cannon. They let him go as a running back, brought him back as a tight end. And he was... He played this kind of game last week against the Rams, and the Raiders are doing the same thing, trying to cover him with a linebacker, and he's very difficult because he is like a running back coming off the line of scrimmage, and once he catches the ball. Second and two at the 50-yard line. Craig, close to a first down. I believe that last effort got it. To follow up on what you mentioned, Frank, another guy, Nick Bell, who was hurt tonight, their second-round draft choice, he is big enough that the Raiders had him running some plays as a tight end in training camp this year. He was actually an offensive lineman back in high school before he went to Iowa and put up some big numbers, and the Raiders took him in the second round. Offensive lineman who turned into one of the glamour positions, Dan. Well, at 255 pounds, he's, uh, he's very much too small to play offensive lineman anymore. While they measure... We can tell you that next week, this is becoming a critical game now for both teams as they try to fight for a playoff spot. Clearly, Washington in the driver's seat in the NFC East, but the Giants 4-4, four four, the Eagles 3-5. and five. Match up at the Vets in Philly next Monday. Be there. Speaking of rivalry, they've had some heated win over the years. They measured. It's a first down. The Raiders have it at the 48-yard line. Raiders have all of their timeouts remaining. Plus the two-minute warning. Raiders throws, and it's dropped at the 28-yard line by Sam Grady, the former Olympic sprinter who has great speed. The question, uh, as it is with a lot of sprinters, a lot of guys who go from track to football, what about the hands? Well, well, that came right off the chest. you got to catch that ball in the hands, and he tried to trap it. There's a flag down, but let's take a look at it again. Ben Grady's problem. Ten yards. Schrader has it right in there. Brady, instead of using his hands, tries to nurse it into the body, and he loses it. Well, wouldn't have counted anyway. I believe they got Bruce Wilkerson, number 68, for holding. Working there on the left side, and Brady's mistake doesn't come back to really haunt him. There's the man who forced the hold, Derek Thomas. He came on the blitz, and now he moves to the other side. First and 20. They flank Craig to the left. Schrader in trouble. Schrader sacked at the 37. Neil Smith. Now, Schrader was forced to come back by Derek Thomas coming around on the outside. He takes his drop, and then he gets the, sees the pressure coming from the outside, and he moves right under the arms of Neil Smith. Green trust on the sidelines. Larry Rubisky and Art Shell. That is the seventh sack of the season for Neil Smith. As we come to the two-minute warning. 120 seconds left in the opening half. Los Angeles 18, Kansas City 7. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deerdorf. Two-minute warning in Kansas City. Raiders on top, 18-7. The Raiders have the ball at their own 37-yard line, second and 25. Raiders have all their timeouts left. Chiefs have one. Tim Brown in motion. They give it to Craig, and he goes nowhere. Stop for a loss of two. It's going to be third down and 26. And right now, timeout, Kansas City, that's their third and last timeout, 40 second timeout. 148 remaining in the half. Tuesday. I would like to know how it feels to be pregnant. 
Will Jesse get his wish? You done? Not yet. Full house. Then, will Tim spill the beans? My wife uses my good gardening tools. You think that's bad? My wife does a thing in the shower. Wait, I got to top you both. Home improvement. And... Let me go. It's Halloween. Liver. And Rosanza a scream. Then... Kelly meets a man. You want to go out with him? I guess if it happened naturally, I might yeah. consider it. Hey, Wilcox, get your butt back in here. Coach, Tuesday. Third down and 27 for the Raiders at their own 35-yard line. Now they like to have those two timeouts. They spent in the first quarterback. Kansas City would. They're out of timeouts. They used two very injudicious timeouts in the first half. One on a fourth and eight to decide what they wanted to do and one with 12 seconds left in the quarter, which was just a goof. Third and 27. Here's Craig. And he takes it up to the 49, and now the Raiders will just take as much time off the clock as they can because Kansas City can't stop it, and then they'll punt. 14-yard pickup, but still fourth and 13. Roger Craig, and we watched him hurdle through the years in San Francisco. And he has taken that Ronaldo Nehemiah act right down to L.A. Yes, he came close to the first down, but you have to figure the Chiefs were thinking, let's don't give them anything big, let's don't give them the first down, even though Craig, with a little bit of an extra effort, came for good yardage up to midfield. And Kansas City should be deeper in their own territory if they get good special teams coverage on the part of the Raiders. Raiders now will... Perhaps let it go down to one and take a timeout, and that's exactly what they do. Even though the clock went down to zero, they were out there saying, look, it goes down to one and we take a tee to stop the clock with 54 seconds, and then they'll punt. So that's, uh, that's using the clock to perfection for L.A. I don't even know why they bother to take a timeout, really five yards at this well, point of the field really doesn't make all that much difference. Then again, you know, let's say... Guards to Oakland. Please reset the clock to one minute, 12 seconds. Did he not say Oakland? Did he? No, I think he did. Well, let's have a replay. Well, yeah. I wonder who would be the first one to see do See if it we tonight. can have a reversal. He didn't say Irwindale, did he? No. Brothers, Kurt Schottenheimer, the special teams coach, and Brother Marty, head coach. Now the Raiders to punt. Jeff Gossett's having a terrific season. He leads the league in net average. Gossett, the one-time baseball player, played in the Mets farm system with people like Mike Scott and Neil Allen. Rushes on, and they almost got there. The kick is taken at the five-yard line by Troy Stratford, and that wasn't very prudent. No. And he can only bring it back out to the six. Goofy play. Why in the world would you field the ball there with everybody running in to try to block the kick? Well, Troy Stratford has only been back in action a couple of weeks now. He's not played that much. He really hasn't got the feel of the game. And this time, he, he makes a terrible mistake to even field the ball at that point. But I think he was trying to make something big happen, and he got the Chiefs in a lot of trouble. Kevin Porter almost made something big happen here. Like a block kick. Boy, he was coming up the middle, and if he could have worked his way towards the right foot of Gossip rather than the left, he was blocked that way. That would have been a uh, that would have been a blocked butt, something that Kansas City has done with regularity over the years. Now you've got the Chiefs in a situation where they'll probably just run out the clock. The Birds having a hard time reading from the sideline what they want them to do. The Raiders have two well, they had, left. They only had ten men. McNair ran out and just got there. Well, now. For some reason, the play was in motion. Raiders take a timeout, but they don't need it. And you can see Ricky Ellison spreading his hands as if to say, no, no, we, we don't need a timeout because the flags went down. And the flag supersedes a timeout call anyway. Uh, the Chiefs were all screwed up on that play. They had only, only had 10 men on the field. They tried to get McNair out onto the field. Okoye saw it happening. I think he was stepping up to tell the Berg we've got a problem. Well, they've got a problem because they're so deep in their own territory, the Raiders can now use their timeouts and get the ball back, I think. Illegal motion, number 35 offense. After distance to the goal, still first down. Raiders have two timeouts left, so it's...
conceivable they could get the ball back at the end or at least force a punt and attempt to block it. They could force a punt. So the Raiders have two timeouts, 59 ticks remaining. Bob Gola. Bob, what a, what what a, a beauty. One of the great, great characters. What did he call it, going from linebacker to nose tackle, the de-evolution yeah. of a football player? Here's a Koye. He has stopped at the five. Now the Raiders take a timeout. Golick had one of the great quotes of the year last week. Some reporter asked him, what sort of stress does Christian Okoye put on your defense? And Golick says, a stress fracture. <laughs> a stress fracture. <laughs> well, <You know>. his... <laughs> <laughs> one of the more thoroughly engaging people you will ever find in this game, Bob Gola. I mean, you know, he played for Marty Schottenheimer in Kansas City in the early going. Started out his career as a linebacker, but he had some Pro Bowl days when Marty Schottenheimer was the defensive coordinator at Cleveland. And he is a character. I think he just gave Howie Long the stress fracture line. Howie kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. What a great player he's been over the years. Well, what will happen here, if the Chiefs run that same sort of play, it'll take four or five seconds off, which will take it down to 49. Here's a Koye, and we're down to 49. A timeout. And now it is third down. The Chiefs can run one more play and uh, that'll if the play lasts four seconds they, they can then run the clock out because it'll restart at 45 anyway at halftime as we mentioned before Al Davis a chat with the embodiment of the Raiders and then the threesome embodiment freely translated means the big boss mm -hmm. Touches on every aspect of this game for the Raiders and always has. Third down. If this play, as I say, takes four seconds before it is whistled dead, that's enough. That's all they would need. Raiders cannot stop the clock. If it takes less than that, they're in a position where they're going to have to run a play. It's a very uncharacteristic things happen with the Chiefs or with a Marty Schottenheimer coach team early on the fourth down and long yardage we've seen with 10 men on the field that usually is not characteristic of a Marty Schottenheimer team now that play clock will reset at 45 the minute the whistle blows down the play here's a Koye and now the whistle has blown so they were able to take enough time off the clock and he will not have to run another play. As you can see, the play clock. Well, the play clock. How did that happen? It. That's your third last time out. 47 oh, time out. Wait, the, the scoreboard had no timeouts. And right now, Steve it, DeBerg is going, wait a minute, I didn't think they had any timeouts. No, neither did I. We know they used two there, and I thought and we're going to check with scoring. Well, Kansas City has been operating this whole time on the assumption that the Raiders had no timeouts, exactly. as were we. Exactly. Well, that's what it said on the scoreboard. It's one thing for us to be wrong, but what a disastrous consequence this has for Kansas City with them being wrong as well. Because well, they would have tried for a first down rather than just run that play right up inside. They knew they weren't going to pick up a first down with that run. They were running out the clock. Up on the board, they had two timeouts remaining, and everybody was under the assumption oh. that there were two, and that could be a very bad mistake on the part of the, the Chiefs, as it turns out. Only partially their fault is Barker kicks. Brown at the 43-yard line. Brings it back to the 45-yard line. Now the Raiders will try to get into field goal position. Burris takes the ball, but the play is over. Let's take a look at Schottenheimer's reaction. Everybody in the ballpark under the assumption they were out of timeouts. <laughs> he's as surprised as we were. Well, he's pointing to the scoreboard up there, which said zero. Oh. 
Well, you know, you can say, I guess you shouldn't pay attention to the scoreboard, which which shows the timeouts. You would think that somewhere, somebody along exactly. the line up in the Kansas City press box on the other end of Marty Schottenheimer's headset would have kept track of the timeout. Well, somebody does have that responsibility on his staff somewhere. First down, a Schrader throws down the sideline and incomplete. I think the, the scoreboard operator might have been confused when the Raiders attempted to call the timeout, but the flag superseded it. He could have gone to two at that point. See, we are being told now that in official stats, they have them with four timeouts. They are telling us the people that keep the official stats that they'd already taken three, and that was the fourth. And they may have concluded something the refs didn't. We don't know. Second down and ten. You know, the funny thing is, too, and I'll, I'll, you got to pin a little bit of this on, on Tom White, the referee. When you say timeout, and he did it twice when the Raiders were on defense, you've got to say timeout, Los Angeles, their third or their second or whatever, and he clearly didn't. I mean, that's part of the obligation of the official to inform not only the crowd, but clearly the teams, how many timeouts are left, and obviously he did not. I can't well, tell you how big a deal this is going to be if the Raiders put points on the board. You know, one of the things that the two-minute warning, which happened not long ago, they come to the bench mm -hmm. and tell the coaches how many timeouts they have remaining. Yep. Third and ten at the 45. And the catch is made by Horton. There's a flag down. They are, for the moment, in field goal range, but there's a marker down. Mike is down right at the line of scrimmage. 12 seconds remaining. And Trader's reaction indicates it's against L.A. Against the Raiders. Could have been Wilkerson over the left side pulling out. He was getting past rushing pressure again from Thomas. Illegal formation. Number 68 is uncovered. Five yards. Still third down. Well, he just didn't line up in the line of scrimmage. The left tackle Bruce Wilkerson concerned about the pass rush on the outside. And he was he was covered in the sense that he had a tight end outside of him. But your point is exactly right, Frank. He was. You have to be within a foot of the football. The rule says you have to be within a foot of the football. Take a look at Wilkerson all the way back there. Number 68. His helmet was at least two or three feet from the ball. Third down, the clock ticking down, eight seconds, seven seconds. Trader gets sacked back at the 38 by Derek Thomas. And Derek Thomas came all the way around Bruce Wilkerson. What speed he has. And flags are thrown on what will be the final play of the half. Well, the Raiders upset about that sack by Derek Thomas, but that was a legal hit. Dan was the only way he could hit him, too, because oh. he had to come so far. He had... Tremendous speed when he got there, and you can't expect him to pull up on it. Now, there is a flag on the field, and remember, a half can't end on a defensive penalty. If by some reason this flag is against the Chiefs, there will be another play. I think it happened after the play. Unfortunately, yeah. conduct. Number 13, Los Angeles. 15 yards from the big ball spot. The down counts. It was well after the play. Fourth down. Well, uh, that falls under the taunting rule. Taunting, he didn't hit him with it. He just turned around and gave it to him. That's, uh, that's Jay Schrader's reaction to getting blindsided by Derek Thomas. And he uh, offered it to Neil Smith, who really wasn't a factor. Here comes Thomas. Look how far he came now. He was lined up way on the right Here side. Down. This is a sprint to the sideline. Wilkinson takes him all the way back, and he comes at least 35 or 40 yards to get there and also because of the penalty they don't wind the clock and it means the Raiders have to run another play had the penalty not occurred they would have wound the clock and they would not have had to run a play well this sequence goes with the rest of the half this is fourth and how long from oh. here to Kansas City Kansas and it doesn't matter that was fourth and over 40 yards into the half. 
Raiders, Chiefs. Bizarre. Halloween week. Figures. As you can tell. 18-7, L.A. Halftime activities coming up after this message from the NFL. And a word from our ABC station. Wild and woolly first half in Kansas City. And by the way, we have checked it out on the play-by-play -play from official scoring. Indeed, four timeouts were given the Raiders in the second quarter. There was an extra timeout. Everybody thought there was an extra timeout, except the officials. As it turned out, it was a non-factor, fortunately. I think it's only fair that Kansas City should get four this half, though. Maybe we can <laughs> prevail upon them. Well, it was a, the only blessing we can say is that the, the Raiders didn't convert that into mm -hmm. any points. Mm -hmm. There you see the halftime numbers. Only 61 yards on the ground, 64 yards passing for Kansas City, a dominant win there for the Raiders in total yardage. Here goes Nick Lowry to put the ball in the air. We start the third quarter at Arrowhead Stadium. Now we know Lowry's all right. Jamie Holland and the Raiders are lucky because the ball goes out of bounds at the one yard line, meaning instead of taking it at the 20, had it reached the end zone, they get it at the 35. 15 yard break for LA. First down Raiders at their own 35 yard line. Well, if you join the slate, the Raiders big back over the recent weeks. Nick Bell has been retired from the night with some broken ribs and whatever game plan the Raiders came in with Bell has been altered considerably because Roger Craig opens up the second half and they have been using Steve Smith ordinarily a blocking back. They've used him a lot. From the 35 yard line here's Schrader going deep. He's got Fernandez but it's knocked down at the last moment by Albert Lewis. Well, there's a ball that if that's thrown on stride, Fernandez is long gone. The ball by Schrader was underthrown. Mervin had to wait for it, and that allowed Albert Lewis to get in on the play. But Watch look the at the distance he has right there, the separation. Well, what a move he put on Albert Lewis. Fernandez went down about 8 or 10 yards, stopped, got a pump fake from Schrader, and then took off, and he was far behind Albert Lewis. Schrader was just short. Second and 10 at the 35-yard line. Roger Craig. Nice. Not, you know, that's a vintage 49er, Roger Craig, to the 43-yard line. And a little alteration of the game plan. I'm sure that Nick Bell would not, been, not have been running that type of play, but that's what Roger Craig does so well. Take it outside and cut it back. A great cutback runner against the grain, even with that long stride of his. Well, Reggie McElroy, the right guard, and Steve Wright, the right tackle, did just an excellent job of sealing off the Kansas City pursuit. That's why Craig had an alley to take it back to the inside. Craig averaging 4.3 tonight, 3.4 coming into tonight's game. Roger to the outside, gets tripped up and can only get back to the 41-yard line. Leonard Griffin makes the play. Fourth down, Raiders will check. Leonard Griffin <laughs> knifing from the far side goes airborne. He's second from the top there, number 98. Look at him get to the inside and look at that dive. Whoa, way to elongate yourself and get in it. Griffin, they bring in when they go to a four down line and that time it was very effective. Ordinarily the Chiefs in a three, four and Griffin is watching, but when they go to a four down lineman, he's in there. Hey, that was that, that was excellent. That was really, really good. Troy Stratford back to receive Jeff Gosses. It's booming kick. A beauty. Fielded at the eight. And brought back to the 23-yard line. Gosh, at that time, a 51-yard punt and 35 net because the run back was 16. 13-14 remaining in the third quarter. Well, now there is a, a burden on the Kansas City offense. They had, I think, what could mildly be described as a very herky-jerky first half. And they ended the first half looking a little bit disjointed. If ever a team needed a good time-consuming drive right now, it would be the Chiefs. The Raiders, by and large, defensively, have been very effective against Kansas City. 
They start with Harvey Williams as their tailback in this set. And here's Harvey, the number one draft choice out of LSU, who takes it up to the 24-yard line. We've done the Chiefs so much in the, the past few weeks. We've talked about Williams, how everyone was surprised on draft day with a Koye and Barry Word doing such a great job for them last year. People were very surprised, but Carl Peterson and his staff knew exactly what they were doing. This guy can bring you something the others can't, and that is that big play capability. Well, Marty Schottenheimer was down coaching the senior bowl, and they had a good look at him, a good long look. He had reconstruction of his knee when he was a sophomore, and he didn't have the great year he did. I mean, he had it between the sophomore and junior year, but he had a 1,000-yard season as a sophomore. Second and eight. This is the tight end, Jonathan Hayes, who gets ridden out by Terry McDaniel up at the 27-yard line. And then if, when Williams came back as a junior, it wasn't too productive uh, at LSU. And then he had a fine season as a senior. But Marty Schottenheimer and his staff saw him at the Senior Bowl, and they said, look, you just can't let one this good get away. You can't have too many good running backs. You know, Kansas City, I remember the one long pass the Berg tried to J.J. Burden where he overthrew him. But I, I think that if there's one fault in Kansas City's game plan, they so seldom stretch it. They so seldom try to open things up defensively downfield that I, I think sometimes it backfires on them. Third down and six. There you the go. Berg got an out to Thomas who makes the catch. Any first down up at the 43-yard line. First catch of the night for Rob Thomas. 16-yard game. Rob, the leading receiver coming into tonight, and that's the first call he gets for the night. Number 81, the little one, possession receiver, but he was a track star. And while well, he was growing up as a high school athlete in Oregon, father was wide receiver, as I said many times, that I played with. His mother, Jeannie, is here tonight watching. His brother, Lance, plays for Fresno State. We're all very proud of him. First and 10 at the 43-yard line, Harvey Williams, Lance to the right side. And is run out of bounds by Eddie Anderson at the 49 after a gain of six. He does make things happen when he turns the corner. He has great speed once he plants that outside foot and makes the move. I'll tell you what else he has, and this is, you know, we talk about the guy's explosiveness and how he's the big play guy. Al, we went by Harvey Williams on our way into the stadium. He was in one of the rooms in the, in the bowels here of, of Arrowhead warming up. I mean, he is a big man. I mean, he's 6'2", 222. I mean, that's not normally the size that you associate with the guy who's labeled the, you know, quote, breakaway back. Second and three from the 50-yard line. Pump fake. The bird goes deep for Thomas, but too deep. Overthrows him by two or three yards. Anderson back there covering. Now, once again, when DeBerg tries to stretch it, as you were calling for a while ago, Dan, pretty good coverage. He was there, and it would have had to have been a perfectly thrown ball to get it in there, and DeBerg very wisely did not try to press his luck. And we wisely picked up the right guy there with our camera shot, Eddie Anderson. Oftentimes, you'll see that kind of a play result in a touchdown, and it's because of an error by the safety. The safety does not give his corner deep help. That time, Eddie Anderson was in perfect position and really had no choice. The Berg had no choice but to overthrow the ball. Shotgun, third down, three from the 49. Raiders by 11 with 11 minutes to go in the third. The Berg hits Barnett. First down. Tackled from behind by Corin Dorn. But the Chiefs convert on a third down and have a first at the L.A. 39. Four wide receivers in, and DeBert had time to throw it, stepped up, and he finds Tim Barnett, who has really emerged as quite a gifted receiver with the loss of Emil Harry and Stephon Page. And as I mentioned in the first half, a good runner once he catches the football. They like to get it to him on a little short pattern. They'll throw, it, throw it to him on like a four-yard hook and just let him break tackle. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. A Koya. Ooh. For four, Ricky Ellison makes the stop. Oh, here's the fly out. We've got Benson in the scuffle. Bill Jones and Benson on the undercard. This is going to be very unwise if it goes against one of these individuals rather than offsetting. And the Chiefs are saying it's going to go against the Raiders. This is going to hurt somebody.
Raiders. They'll slip out. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 54, Los Angeles. 15 yards. First down. Bad time for a bench and boogie. Well, it just means he's no saint. <laughs> he is plan B. An unwise penalty. And this has been a, an extremely effective drive by Kansas City to this point. This was started at their own 23-yard line, exactly what they needed. First and 10 of the 20-yard line. Coye. Not much of a nightmare on that play, and that tackle made uh, by Long and Benson. Well, Howie Long, submarine, and was there first. Wily old crafty veteran with a big play. What you try to do against Kansas City, any run oriented defense, is take away their first down. Give them second and long. I'll tell you something I try to do, I try to block Howie Long. Something they didn't even attempt that time. Second and nine, Kansas City at the LA 19. 9.15 to go in the third. 18-7, Los Angeles. Williams exploits a hole. Close to a first down. Boy, is he quick. McDaniel makes the tackle. See, that's what he can do that Okoye and Word don't have a prayer of doing. Get through a hole like that. Sees a little gap, and he just explodes. A lot of people, a lot of running backs can do this. But uh, he seems to time it beautifully. But what a hole that is. And he is through that hole before the recovery can be made. It was Aaron Wallace trying to get back and make the tackle. But Okoye would have been hit at the line of scrimmage. At least hit at the line of scrimmage. He might have dragged Wallace for a few yards. But William just exploded through it. Nice block by Old to help pave the way. Third and one at the 11-yard line. All kinds of action, and do you get the feeling Ronnie Lott was going to blitz on that play? Rich Baldinger did, because he came out of his stance and drew the flag. Ball start, 77 offense, 5 yards, moving fire to the snap, still third down. When you're down as an offensive lineman, you can see the feet. <laughs> You see the stampede of feet coming at you, and sometimes you're just not able to hold it. And Baldinger saw Lott's feet coming, and he just wasn't able to stay in his stamp. And Lott came right across the line of scrimmage as soon as he saw Baldinger raise up and made the contact. Third and six. Looks like Moss and Lott are coordinating something here. And the bird takes a timeout. Boy, I don't get it. Yeah, they just just haven't seemed to be in rhythm all night. They used two very imprudent timeouts in the first half. Might have cost them a little at the end of the first half, and now they have to spend one here with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Here is our crack crew making extensive use of their per diem. <laughs> They have a tradition here in the parking lot at Arrowhead. They sent some of it up to the booth. It wasn't too bad. Third and six from the 16-yard line as the Berg has it stiff and it's incomplete and it's fourth down. Anthony Smith is the man who got a hand up. Number 94 of the Raiders. Fourth down. Smith having quite a year. Four sacks coming into tonight. Missed last year with... A knee problem, the Raiders' first round draft pick of a year ago, and he gets a big paw up there. And Rob Thomas was wide open for a first down inside the five. Nick Lowry now for a 33 yard field goal attempt. Brian Barker to hold. Responded at the 23 yard line. And Lowry's kick is good with 754 remaining in the third. Barker gets it down, and Lowry, with some help from Barker, pulls them to within eight. 
Arrowhead Stadium, 78,000 packing it tonight. 7.54 left third quarter. Raiders lead the Chiefs 18 to 10. Nick Lowry kicking off for Kansas City. Last kickoff went out of bounds. This one's right down the middle. Holland a yard in, decides to down it there, and they'll take it at the 20-yard line. Scoring drive for the Kansas City Chiefs. Took uh, a little more than five minutes. 61 yards to set up Lowry to make it 18 to 10. <laughs> it never ends. Mm. I always, uh, I always like the original better. <laughs> it's, uh, First down, Raiders from the 20. Here's Roger Craig. Can't even reach the line of scrimmage. Dan Saliamua. Says Aloha. You almost get the sense that the Chiefs are trying to crank it up a little notch. Over the sidelines, they had huddled up and a lot of pursuit on that play defensively. And I'd say that at the conclusion of that play, there were three separate collisions involving Raiders and Chiefs. Any one of the three could have blown into another fight. Now, I'll be surprised if we go to balance of this game without another fracas of, of some sort. Second and 11. Trader deep for Fernandez and incomplete. Albert Lewis was covering on the play. Cherry came over to help out. Tony Dunsey, the defensive backfield coach of the Chiefs, says that this man, number 29, Albert Lewis might be the best man-for-man -man defensive back of this era. Now, whatever he's talking about, he is the best he's Tony Dungy has ever seen, and he's seen some great ones. I'm really surprised Jay Schrader attempted to get that ball to Fernandez. Marker down. We've got a Running personal a foul. Number 90. Hits it ahead at the face pass. 15 yards. First down. Well, we didn't even see that flag on the field. The Raider team was standing on top of it. That's Neil Smith, who gets called for hitting Schrader in the head. That's Tony Dungy in the middle of the screen, the defensive backfield coach, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Did not look like it. The blow should have drawn a flag. I think the officials are just trying to make certain that this doesn't get out of hand because, as you mentioned, Dan, there have been a lot of near fracases. I think they're trying to keep track of timeouts. Here's Roger Cray. Gets eight. Steer wrestled down by Kevin Porter. Let's go back and see if we can take a look, if we can find Neil Smith's hit on, on Jay Schrader. All right, here's the conclusion of the play. There's Smith breaking free. McElroy, 77, is blocking him. Well, the only thing you could surmise is that he got his hand on the face mask, and that is a no-no. Yeah, but you didn't even see Schrader's... You did not see the head move. Yeah, you didn't even see Schrader's head pop back. Let's try it from here. Oh, you can well, see where maybe he, a little bit, yeah. He grazed the face mask, but... That's tight. <laughs> Here's Steve Smith, and he is stopped... a little Steve short of the first here. down by Dan Saliamua. Third down, and a yard or less coming up. I have to assume that when Jay Schrader turned around and saw that flag on the ground, he was probably wondering to himself what it was for. They're going to measure. This is close enough to measure. It appears from here they are uh, a couple of inches shy of the first down. Marcus Allen and uh, directing traffic on the well, sidelines, and we've got it. Good call, Al. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well... <laughs> Is it one of seven USC What's players it? on the Raiders team? If they put that stupid thing down where they should have, they yeah, wouldn't have been a first down. You know what I'm saying? We've always said the spotting should be done from the announce booth, Absolutely. not on the field. <laughs> what do they know down there? Right. <laughs> first and ten from the 44. Raider hits 
Willie Gold, he's been pretty silent tonight up at the 49-yard line. Gold is the man they send on the long stuff. Willie, uh, for his career, averaging over 20 yards per reception, and that's his first catch of the night and is good for five yards. Could have got a few more out of that had he not slipped. And defensively, Kevin Ross playing way off Willie Gold, who rightfully so respects the speed of the former Tennessee track star. Second down and five at the 49-yard line. Horton in motion. Roger Craig. And he gets four. Ball will be spotted at the 47 of Kansas City, and that will set up a third and about a yard and a half with Dino Hackett making the stop. Five minutes to play, third quarter, 18 to 10. One other note, which we haven't mentioned tonight, the Raiders, the undisputed kings of Monday Night Football. Through the years, an incredible 29, 6, and 1 during when, the history of this package. And when you take into consideration that you're not playing doormats on Monday Night Football, you're playing perpetual winners division winners and playoff teams from the year before it makes that record even more astounding and you're playing almost always on the road especially yeah. in the last three years here's a busted play but they give it to craig who takes it to the 41 yard line hackett makes the stop and that's as good a job as i've ever seen a quarterback do turning a busted play into something that looked like it comes out of a playbook i'm well, not sure Raider never lost control of it i'm, I'm not, not sure he sure. was the one that broke it though uh, in any event it was heads up play by schrader to get the football into the back because now he'll, he spins left there's nothing happening here baby i go to get back where it's happening yep i'm not so sure that was a busted play well i i'll tell you what the way that uh, craig kind of took that long way around coming back in if it was a fake it was a darn good one mm -hmm. first and ten at the 42 yard line Crater is throwing. The catch is made by Fernandez. He's dragged down at the five-yard line by Albert Lewis. Oh, and what a great shot you got of Schrader drilling that ball in between two defenders. Little man-for-man -man coverage on Lewis, and they've been testing Lewis all night, testing that knee, top of your screen. And Fernandez just gets a little bit of a step. He gives Lewis a little out move, and Schrader right on stride to Fernandez. Beautifully thrown pass by Schrader. Three catches, 108 yards tonight for Mervyn Fernandez, who has assumed the Willie Gold role. Raiders take a timeout. Normally, it's Gold long. Fernandez more as the possession guy in the last couple of years. And Morton, the tight end, roams underneath. 3.01 to go. First and goal, L.A., when we return. Off. First and goal, L.A. from the six. Trader the fake. Trader throws too low intended for Smith. The Chiefs this season have not given up more than 19 points in any one game. Right now, 18 is their yield. It's pretty wise on the part of Schrader because there was good coverage. Kevin Porter had Smith covered well, and Schrader would have had to risk quite a bit to get it into him. Down here, you don't want to come away with nothing. And the Chiefs have been notoriously tough down here. Raiders by eight, second and goal at the six. Smith stopped by Martin. And again, keep in mind, the Raiders this season won rushing touchdown in eight games plus uh, whatever we played here tonight, almost three quarters. And that touchdown scored by the now injured Bell. We get a look there at Chris Martin. We're just about in his range for fumble return. And interesting, Kansas yeah. City has not yeah. allowed a team to score 20 points on them this year. And the Raiders are threatening that. Third and goal at the five. Trader fires, and it's dropped by Brown. Sam Brown couldn't handle it. Well, Tim Brown, who Everett might have got a hand on that. He acted as though he did. 
Number 39. Larry Gebert was right there. He reached in just as the ball got to Tim Brown. That's a major play, too. You score a touchdown, you're up by 15, which means the Chiefs would need more than two touchdowns. Right now, at least you'll hold the margin down to 11. Jager, 23-yard attempt, no problem. 209 left in the third. Three more for the Raiders. Most points given up this season in any one game by the Chiefs. It is now 21 to 10. Weird way to get to 21. ABC Sports and Nutmeg Mill have come together to create ABC Sportswear. is here. Back in Kansas City, 209 left in the third quarter. Raiders on top 21 to 10. Schrader just marched them down for a field goal. Harvey Williams is the man in the middle, ready to accept this kick. Trying to gauge where Jager is going to boot it, in which direction. it straight down the middle to the three Williams hit it to nine but gets it all the way back out to the 23 yard line Dan Land again makes the tackle Harvey Williams never did go to the ground and this guy if he doesn't get hurt and if he continues to just show the steady improvement he's shown early in this football season this guy has legitimate superstar written all over him this guy should be a great player in this league for a long time Get an idea of how fast he is because they use him back there on kickoffs and he came into the night leading the conference and kickoff returns and he hasn't hurt himself a whole lot 159 left in the third first down kc at the 24. raiders by 11. look at how he long <laughs> Catch made by Pete Holahan up to the 32-yard line. He's tackled by Tom Benson, a gain of eight. I think Long got off the ball. I mean, that is how a defensive lineman anticipates a snap count and beats everybody. Howie Long is moving before anybody on the field. Look at that. I think he's guessing with the count, Dan. That's the only way to get off that pass. I mean, there's no other way. But he was right. It takes experience to know when they're going to go on that same count. Second and one. Here's Williams making the catch, and he stretches forward close to a first down, as you can see, up at the 34-yard line. As well, we get that to include the marker. I think he's going he's gonna to get the first, and what a great effort it was to do it. First down up at the 34. Howie Long again puts a move on the inside, gets by Lute. Watch the fake to the outside, then reacts back to the inside, and then he's right in the face of Steve DeBerg. DeBerg has no choice but to throw back on his heels and was very fortunate to complete the pass. You know, they signal first down, and now they're going to measure. <laughs> you tell me. Well, they want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, you that, tell me. I don't know. sort of in reverse. I saw, I saw what you saw. I mean, you measure, and then you signal mm -hmm. first, don't you? <clears throat> Whatever. Better safe than sorry oh. now. Okay. <laughs> Come on, you guys. The Raiders want to see it. Old Tom White's having a tough one as it is. Pete Holland in the lineup now for Kansas City, and he's been in there. A plan B player they picked up this year. Had over 330 receptions with San Diego and the Rams. Former Notre Dame star with great hands, and they would like to work him into their passing game. And... He maybe doesn't give them the blocking that Jonathan Hayes does, but he certainly is a better receiver. Number 89, Holohan. First and 10, KC from the 34-yard line. Here's Williams. And it was Holohan's man who came down the line of scrimmage. Winston Moss makes the tackle. Clock is running down. The Chiefs will not have to run a play. Yeah, but you'd think they'd want to. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Unless they can't wait to go the other way for some reason. 
You notice that Harvey Williams has, for all intents and purposes, replaced Christian Okoye as the feature back, and I think that's a, a smart move by Marty Schottenheimer. Put the ball in the hands of the guy who can do something in one play. Second, they were down by 11. Second okay. and eight. Wobbly throw, and he's lucky it wasn't picked off. Intended for Rob, Intended for Rob Thomas, Thomas, and in the neighborhood was Lionel Washington, who's already intercepted five this season. Winston Moss that time put heavy heat on DeBerg. Dangerous pass. Now he must have seen something I certainly didn't see from up here. I thought everybody was covered, and that is a pass that Terry McDaniel could have picked off and trotted home with relatively easily. There is Okoye and Bill Jones side by side on the sideline. And at this stage of the ball game, the guy who is good for four or five yards isn't good enough. McNair in the game, third down and eight. The play clock down to three. You're looking at the game clock. Oh. And a deep pass is incomplete, and that was a terrible pass because Washington was back there, and J.J. Burden wasn't even close. Into the quarter, Chiefs kick when we come back to start the fourth quarter. Washington shaken up end of three, 21 to 10. Start the fourth quarter, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and we begin with a Kansas City punt by Brian Barker which is caught oh. by Tim Brown. That's got to bring a flag. He is hit after, I believe, he had called for the fair catch. Oh, he did. And Todd McNair said, I never saw it. That doesn't count. Yeah. He gave it a pretty good wave. There it is. That's all you got to do. And the problem is, you saw the two Raiders there who moved out of the picture to the left. They were harassing McNair all the way down the field, and McNair, he really didn't see Brown signal the fair catch. But that still is not, that's still not good enough. Once he makes that signal, he's entitled to protection. With the opportunity, 15 yards from the spot, first down. That is a brutal penalty. Mm -hmm. But it's incumbent upon that man coming down to be aware of that signal. Well, it's just a... It's a bad set of circumstances. You're trying to fight. Here, look at McNair trying to fight his way through two guys. He's trying to make sure he doesn't get blocked. And you could actually see him look back up for the ball over his shoulder at the moment Brown signaled the fair catch. Mm, that's I mean, where he lost it. It's just a, a bad set of circumstances for that guy, McNair. That's one time you don't want to keep your eye on the ball. Yeah, and a good break for the Raiders. First down L.A. up at their 43. Opening second, fourth quarter, Los Angeles by 11. Craig can't get out of the backfield. He was initially stopped by Derek Thomas, and then Sally Amua wraps him up. Numbers through three quarters of play. Ready to appear. Raiders still with the edge and total yardage. Big pass play. Not much on the ground for L.A. and a lot less on the ground than Kansas City at home. 85 for Kansas City rushing. This is not indicative of their game at all. And I think an overall lack of continuity by the Kansas City offense. Just everything is out of sync for them tonight. And the Raiders will do that to you. Second and 14. Catch is made by Brown up at the 45-yard line. If you're just joining us and you see the score, the score looks very conventional, 21 to 10, but the Raiders get there in the most unconventional way. Field goal, safety, touchdown with a missed extra point. Touchdown, field goal, 21-10 LA. And the way that the Kansas City offense has moved the ball tonight, I guess you have to credit guys like Howie Long a great deal. Does he look like a Raider or not? He Fox is. torn. He is the Raiders right now. That's a Raider manicure. Third and eight from the 45. Beats a cutlass every time. <laughs> <laughs> and Trader may have had his arm hit as he threw it. Pass is incomplete. Chris Martin came charging in. And the pass was in the vicinity of no one. Fourth down. What a year Martin's having. 100 yard return of a fumble against Miami. A lot of pressures. 
right here, forcing Schrader to throw the ball actually away. Jeff Gossett to punt. Teams have 10 men on the line, and they all come, and there's a pass, and the pass is caught by Elvis Patterson. And Patterson, the former Giant cornerback, and now a special team star for the Raiders, has just starred on special teams. You know, I don't know why somebody from the Chiefs was not out there in front of Patterson. Did he come off the bench late or something? Did they not see that he was out there? Ordinarily, they have a man in front of the two deep men that go downfield. There was nobody there. Probably something that the Raiders had picked up on a play when the Chiefs are trying to block the punt, that they do not cover the outside men. And it wasn't pretty, but it was effective, and no one is near Patterson. That is an amateurish mistake on the part of the special teams of the Kansas City Chiefs. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Craig exploits the hole and exploits the situation by giving L.A. a first and goal at the 7-yard line. That is the type of a mistake that can deflate a football team's spirit. If Craig just rocketed through that hole, and a big hole it was. Nobody even touched him at the line of scrimmage. And well, look at that block there by Mosbar, who puts Dino Hackett right Great on effort. his back. Don Mosbar, the great all-pro center of the of the Raiders. This is where Kansas City has been tough, but let's see if there's a change in their attitude after that back-breaking play. First and goal. Smith checking with Schrader. That's the way the Raiders change the play. Yeah. <laughs> and they line up in the eye, and they give it to Craig, and he gets the yard. After all that. It's not as deceptive as sending a fax. Well, you know what? It beats the timeout. It yep. does. They're still talking about it. Yeah. Have it ever accused them of being pretty? They just effective. The Raiders in no hurry. See this on almost every play here. Tracy Simeon there with a little leg work. Second and goal. Schrader has it tipped at the goal line and incomplete. And a flag comes down. Goal to the intended receiver. Pearson was covering and the ball was tipped at the goal line. I'm not. It almost looked like golf was the one who interfered with Pearson. Yeah, right. that's what it was. Pearson had a, looked like he had a chance to maybe intercept that thing, and it was Gall who came up and hit him from behind. I think what the Raiders are saying is that the pass was tipped. The pass was tipped at the, at the goal line. And that could change the call. There is no offensive pass interference on the play. The reason being, the ball was tipped prior. Right. Therefore, it's just an incomplete pass. Okay. Third down. Yeah, Dino Hackett gets a hand on him. That's the tip, and that's the interference you mm -hmm. see on the Raiders, Willie Goff. But once that ball is tipped, that changes the scenario altogether. Third down. And goal now at the six. 11-21 remaining in regulation. 21 to 10. Raiders. this game around. I'll 
Schrader. I didn't realize Schrader was that fast either. Well, not so much that he was fast. It was a Burris. Looked like he was running in mud that past last 30 yards. But take a look at it again. I don't think, no way Schrader even saw Burris. A, a not very pretty pass by Jay Schrader. See, there's Timmy Brown, one of the fastest men on the field. But look at Schrader go. I mean, look at Jay Schrader, who in a sense cuts off the middle of the field. Here's Harvey Williams taking it to the 11 on a first down play, making it second down and six. Well, Lloyd Burris has had a magnificent career, but in recent times, he's been relegated to spot duty. He cut himself at the conclusion of that play. He's bleeding from the forehead. Many times a pro bowler, Lloyd Burris was a starter. Lost his job to Kevin Porter, but still is puts in a great play for the Chiefs. Burton right back into the season, season for him. Second down and seven. Harvey Williams. Oh, he could run it up. Whoa, four yard up. line. Tom Benson makes the hit. And enough for a first down. Just his own blocking on the part of the Chiefs offensive line. They just all took the man outside their left shoulder and gave Williams an opportunity to make the cut. What speed he has. With the size, 6'2", 222. This has been a Hall of Fame night for interception returns. There is. Burris is 83 yards. First and goal at the four. 9.45 to go. Williams goes next to nowhere. Half a yard or so. Harvey Williams on the carry. Dorn and Moss. Stop him. 21 to 10. Raiders on top. Well, our, here Okoye, comes the Okoye is coming back in, and they're bringing the short yardage offense in. But with Kansas City, it doesn't negate the possibility of play action. They've been moving the ball with Williams on the ground. And nobody hides it like Steve DeBerg. It's safe to say that guy won't be covered. He's only caught two passes all year. Remember in Denver when DeBerg stuck one in his face mask? <laughs> that was in Denver. Yeah. Second and goal. The fake. DeBerg throws. Tipped and nearly intercepted and then nearly caught. Ricky Ellison pounds his helmet into the turf. And Pete Holohan almost came up with a deflection. Third and goal. And third and goal from the three. Now out come four wide receivers and McNair for Kansas City. We have seen some poor quarterback decisions down on the goal line here on successive series. Just Jay Schrader didn't get away with it the way Steve DeBerg just did. And I don't think Ricky Ellison would have taken that as far as birth. Third and goal. Take the inside give it. They do give it to McNair. Tremendous fake. And McNair takes it. He's not in though. Just short of the goal line. It'll be fourth down. You got You got to go for it. You got to go for it. Now the nightmare comes back on Okoye. What an unbelievable ball handling job. It never ceases with the bird. Well, see, he actually moves past him, and the ball comes back in. Lionel Washington wasn't fooled, made the tackle, but here's the play of the game for KC. Fourth and goal. Okoye is the tailback. Jones the fullback. They give it to Okoye going laterally. And he's in. Well, that is probably the least likely thing you would expect. Okoye going east and west instead of north and south. But it works. And the Chiefs are back in it. Jerry Robinson, the old veteran linebacker for the Raiders, reads it and ends up making the hit, but the big man ends up in the end zone. Watch Jerry Robinson. There he is, number 57. He fights off the block of all. He gets to the outside of Jones and cuts Okoye, but Okoye gets across the goal line with the football. And that's all he could have done. If he'd have taken Okoye on straight, he would have carried him out of the back of the end zone. Lowry for the point after. 
Art Good Shelf effort, said, big man. Art Shell said before the game, one of the keys is to get this guy going laterally. Well, it's a key now to keeping Kansas City in the game. Christian Okoye did not have the long axes of his body perpendicular to the goal line, but he scored anyway. Hmm? Where it all looks great. Where can I take you? Everywhere. Imagine a rent a car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. Enterprise, a special rent a car company that gives you special delivery. You thought November's big fight was canceled. Wrong. The Giants meet the Eagles next week on ABC's Monday Night Football, and you don't have to pay for it. Christian Okoye, who scraped his now bloodied right elbow, has that wrapped as he goes in for the touchdown here. Well, he took a lot of hide off, and just mentioning to Dan a moment ago, <laughs> this will get well sometime in February. Let's see. Underneath the elbow of Christian Okoye. Lowry to kick off. The Raider lead is now four. Fielded up at the 14 by Sam Grady, who moves forward to the 26-yard line. Raiders have it there. They lead 21-17. 7.58 left in regulation in Kansas City. Back in Kansas City. I about had it. One. I about had it with this. Ooh. <laughs> How much do we have to go through with it? I hope it doesn't catch on anyplace else. Now we 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 can't say that Kansas City just started this with the World Series. It's been going on here for quite some time. But I just hope it's not contagious. Well, first enough already. <laughs> excitement is now contagious in the stadium because Lloyd Burris's interception and subsequent Kansas City touchdown has made it a tight one when it looked like the Raiders were about ready to write a climax to it. Frey carries for three. It'll be second down and seven. That much time remaining in the fourth quarter. Again, Denver leads the division six and two. Each of these teams five and three, and either Al Davis's Raiders or the Chiefs will be a halfback. The other team will be a game and a half behind. Second and seven. Flag down. Looks like Smith came across the line. Smith makes the catch, and then there's another flag I on the other side of the field. You wait and see if maybe they don't snag Steve Wright, the right tackle, for a false start. There was a quiver there. I'll leave it to an old tackle to spot a quiver. Well, I, it was... I'm not saying that it was unequivocable. <laughs> but oh, it was, <laughs> I thought I saw a flinch. That's an old tackle on the right. Don't equivocate. Okay. Tom White and his crew. Must have been just barely a quiver. It's a tick. All right, Tom. Tommy, what's the deal? A false start. Number 66, Hawkins. 
Face mask is disregarded because there was no play in essence once you had the full start. That's exactly right. Al. Here is Steve Wright. He's on the end of the line. You see that little move right there. That's enough to simulate the start of a play. From that point in time, nothing happened. There's the face mask at the end of a play that never happened. So that little quiver negates a 26-yard gain. And look and out. Well, and Schrader, it's all he can do to hold on to the oh. football. Now the man who caused the quiver on the last play came around the horn and was there once again. Derek Thomas with the great speed. Another flag's down. I think you got to give Jay Schrader a great deal of credit for holding on to that football. Look at this. But he lost it with the right hand and oh. it caught it with the left hand. Oh, that, 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 you, you can't underestimate how, how nice that is by Schrader. That's a, that's a, that, that's the type of a play, I think, where nine out of ten quarterbacks in this league end up fumbling the football. Two separate times he had to fight to regain control. And again, we have a conference. We have a continuing action foul, personal foul, number 58, 15 yards for what? First down. Continuing action, meaning after the play? It had to be after Schrader was down. Something must have happened after Thomas gave the hatchet chop because that's perfectly legal. He was going for the football, and that is legal. Well, he was tied up with Wisniewski after the play, I think. There's Thomas down on off. See his right leg sticking up? Wisniewski's trying to take it off. Oh, there's it. There it is. Now, it's a right to the face. That is his reaction to Wisniewski. Yeah, it was a right hand to the face. And, and what a penalty, too, yes. because here's Craig to the 32. Instead of it being third and a mile, it's first and ten, and Martin makes the stop. Big, big, big penalty. But again, it's kind of incumbent upon Derek Thomas to know whoever does react to something like that, he is the one that's going to draw the flag. And you just got to kind of save it for later. Well, it, it wasn't much, but you don't slap a guy in the face and expect to not have some yellow flying. It's just going to happen. Well, earlier they had a very big penalty assessed uh, when Neil Smith roughed Schrader, leading to Raider points. Just a very big one. Especially in light of the time remaining. Schrader's going to keep. He doesn't do this very often, but he does it with some effectiveness and then gets banged down as Thomas chases him from behind. It's a 38, and we've got a flag down again. But uh, not at the end of the play. It's near the line of scrimmage. Well, I saw somebody get tackled back at the line of scrimmage, and that's what the call's going to be. I think Sally Amu is the guy that got hauled to the ground. I couldn't see who did it. How about the sheer speed of Derek Thomas? He was way <laughs> inside. He reversed gears, turned around, and ran Schrader down. I mean, watch this. Caught way inside. Look at this. A full sprint. Schrader knows he's there, too. So where's that sideline? It'll be out of here. <laughs> Almost shook Schrader out of his suit. Number 76 offense. 10 yards. Still second down. That's Wisniewski, the, the player that actually was involved with Derek Thomas. The player that Thomas uh, turned around and slapped. I think that time he tackled Dan Sally Amua. They say they never even things up. And I presume they didn't. Well, I there was a blatant hold. Wasn't there always? Yeah. Second and 21 from the 21. Schrader throw intended for the bent over backwards. Horton is incomplete. Horton broke to the outside, and by all appearances, Jay Schrader thought he was breaking to the inside. That's a sight adjustment where Horton is looking at the defense, reacts one way, and he reacted oppositely of what Jay Schrader saw. Carl Peterson, who is uh, the man who has pretty much helped to rebuild this team and get him to the playoffs last year. Big time play coming up as he looks down on the field. Big Carl. play for Kansas City's defense. Carl had his coat on a while ago. 
Third and 21. Schrader slings it out for Craig. But he stopped well short of the first down at the 31-yard line. So it's fourth down. J.C. Pearson and Albert Lewis converge on the hit. And we're down to 5.03 remaining as Bill Cowher's defensive unit will get the ball back for Kansas City. Neil Smith comes off. Gossett comes in to kick for Shell's Raiders. And Gossett tonight, his two punts have gone 50 and 51 yards. And as we say, he leads the league in net punting. And the Chiefs would like to block one if they could. They get a quick snap, though, and they don't even get set up to make the effort. Bradford at the 23. And a nice run back by Troy out to the 42-yard line. That was a nice run back. Nifty run by the former Miami Dolphin. The Chiefs picked up plan B, broke his arm. In training camp, his owner, Lamar Hunt, looks on. But he has come back and now is being used as a wide receiver, number 25, Troy Stratford. 45-yard kick, 17-yard return. Four and a half to go. L.A. by four. For the Raiders to stay in the game and have a chance to win it, it was imperative they keep the Chiefs' running game in check, and they've done a pretty good job of it tonight. 141 for KC coming in, 100 tonight, and a light is there, Steve DeBerg, and he's the man. First and 10, Kansas City at its own 42, 432 left in regulation, 21-17, Raiders. The bird fires over the middle, nearly picked off by Ladd, and said it winds up in Holahan's hands. First down. And Ronnie Lott almost had his fourth big interception in the last three games. He Four played points. it perfectly, Al. He timed it perfectly, and he just didn't control it. And the sure-handed Houlihan was lying on the carpet, and he was able to make the completion. Lott laying back, playing that center field, timed it beautifully. And they give it to Williams and let him take it to the 27-yard line. Harvey Williams, first down. You talk about an explosive start for a big man. The 6'2", 222 pounds. You haven't seen much better than this. I agree, this is a big time in the making right here. This youngster is... Well, that was a great runner. That was tremendous blocking, too. What a, what a huge hole. David Lutz helped provide it. Williams to the 24. And the situation is this, and again, I say this with some hesitancy after that debacle in the first half. We think each team has two timeouts remaining, but don't go to the bank on it. In fact, don't even go to an SNL with it. They're not open until the morning anyway. <laughs> You know what I'm thinking those, back to right now? Are, those that continue to open. I'm thinking back to the first half when the Chiefs didn't attempt a Lowry field goal from 45 yards. Mm -hmm. He's 21 to 20 now. Second and six. And a tremendous catch is somehow made by Freddie Jones, his first catch of the night. And Lionel Washington is there to bring him down. They spot the ball at the 22 and brings up a very big third and five. That was an NFL throw, an NFL catch, an NFL cover. <laughs> that was good stuff. Holahan comes out and Jonathan Hayes comes in at tight end. You presume Hayes in there to block. Third and five. They have to get to the 17. And Williams gets to about the 17 and a half. Oh. Eddie Anderson, well, they're going to spot it right there. It looks like they, they will give him a spot which will provide a first down. Well, that's across the field from the chains, right. and they're going to have to bring him across Marcus Allen saying, you gave him too much. I think they gave him a very favorable spot. The official chains are on the other side of the field, so they'll bring those over. Those, uh, that chain there is a visual aid. Have you noticed, though, over the course of this game, how hard it is to knock Harvey Williams off his feet? First down. I mean, Eddie Anderson came knifing into Williams' leg. I think fully expecting him to go to the ground, and he never did go to the ground. 
And I think, Al, you used the word favorable. And uh, I would, too. Yep. <laughs> he didn't appear to have it by that look. That looked to be a, a, a very fortunate spot for the Chiefs. Clock will stop at the two-minute warning, and then they have two timeouts left. So plenty of time, all the time the Chiefs need. First and ten at the 17-yard line, and they give it to the rookie, Williams, and he takes it to the 17, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. Wild finish coming up from Kansas City where the Raiders try to hold on. Started the game tonight talking about that man and how he has been responsible in good measure for the last two Raider wins. And he and his defensive unit right now are responsible for preserving a Raider victory. Two minutes to go. Second down. at the 17. Two timeouts left for the Chiefs. Raiders up by four. Movement, but no flag. Low throw to the eight-yard line. Caught by Thomas. The Raiders say no. The officials say yes. Spotted at the nine. Shell says, give me a break. Uh, they were thrown low, but Thomas had both arms on the carpet, and it looked like he did scoop it up. Let's take a, a look, a good angle. Oh, I don't know how you could turn it over, but that was very, very close, and I'm sure they'll look. They'll they are look. Looking. They'll look at it, but that sure looks like a good catch to me. It's an eight-yard gain. If it stands, it's going to make it third and two. Thomas didn't try to pull it off the carpet. He had both arms apparently underneath it they're going to rule it completed well, i don't think you can turn that over he had both arms protecting it from the carpet great effort by rob thomas again indisputable visual evidence to See, overturn that's the key I'm sure if you're a Raider fan, you're going, well, what are those guys talking about? Didn't you see that ball bounce off the turf? So <laughs> Pendry, the offensive coordinator, and Marty Schottenheimer, Pendry with Marty Schottenheimer at Cleveland, as was the defensive coordinator. At the further review, the play fans this call, the uh, If you're a Raider fan, you think the ball bounced twice. Yeah. But that's, that is really the only ruling you could expect certainly no evidence was offered up there that conclusively could turn it over third down two at the nine boy this is a typical monday night mm -hmm. the bird into the end zone flag down that's made at the one Freddie Jones covered by Washington. Washington clapping his hands as if it's going to be offensive interference. Well, there was were contact, but a lot of contact made. Woo! Oh, against Freddie Jones. But yeah. it did not look that bad. I'll, I'll tell you, they bounced off of each other and didn't look like it was any thing that Jones did intentionally. Just the something that you ordinarily would get. When you're down near the goal line, you got to tighten up. That's what Lionel Washington is doing right here. Pass interference. Offense, number 80, oh. 10 yards, third down. Boy, I'll tell you. Now, now, from that angle, we didn't see anything. I mean, the only thing we couldn't see with his right arm. I mean, did Jones push off with his right arm? All right, here they come into our picture. There's Washington. Here's Jones. from there man I'm telling you what Oof. well when you're down as you said Dan when you're down close to the goal line you are going to play it very tight and you're going to have that incidental contact uh, and that looked to me as though it was incidental contact just that they're I mean, checking I think for the for the spot of the ball here I mean I just let them check the spot all they want where do they see Fred Jones pushing off I mean uh, 
Well, I'm, yeah, I'm just well, saying that the reason, for the, the reason for the delay right. on the field right now, I mean, this is done. That's a done deal. That's well, a fait accompli. They can't review that. I mean, no, the, that's not reviewable, but my God. Woo. Boy, Marty is hot, too. Well, I think he's got reason to be. I really had a good look at it. He knew what was going to happen. There's offensive pass in the There's nothing for a replay to review. Yeah, exactly. We know that. Well, that is a uh, fortuitous break for the Raiders. And that's a shame for Fred Jones because I didn't see it. Third down and 12 at the 19-yard line. The bird from the shotgun. Drops the ball. And then throws and he hits. McNair, and he takes it to the 11-yard line, where it's going to be fourth down, and let's call it four, with 101 left. Kansas City's going to take a timeout. Mike Jones makes his first tackle of the night, and Kansas City spends its second timeout. So they have one remaining, but more importantly, when we come back, fourth and three, and the Chiefs must convert to stay in the game. The bird with the last second instructions as to the play call here on fourth down and a short four at the 11. They have to get just inside the eight. 101 remaining. Raiders by four. The bird to McNair. First down. Kansas City now elects to use its final timeout. Well, I'm not so sure that's the place I would have used it. No, no I, I wouldn't either here. You've got four shots at the end zone, but you can't stop the clock. McNair, so often they use him on third and short yardage. This time he was set up not as in the backfield, but as a wingback. Very talented receiver. And he is focused on one thing. Let me get that first down. And he gives it that second effort. And he comes up with it. See, I think one of the reasons Kansas City had to use the timeout there is that they have such a radical personnel difference between what they run on first down and what they run in a situation like that that I guess they just didn't feel there was any way they could get to the line of scrimmage and run a running play. And I think that forced them to take the time out because I that just didn't strike me as the place to use it. Yeah, they have plenty of time. They're not in any time problem. Four shots at the end zone. The bird throws wide open is Barnett. The bird paid the price. He held on until Barnett uncovered. And down he went. Scott Davis. A pretty nice little pick play. A variation of the pick here, Frank. Uh, we see a lot of it. Particularly down when the defensive back has to play tight on the receiver. And here comes Barnett. And he has got Lionel Washington with him. He lets him go. And the Raiders tie up on the slot man. And Steve DeBerg is driven into the ground by Scott Davis. Lowry for the point after. 24 to 21, and the Raiders get the ball back with 47 seconds and two timeouts. And keep in mind, a field goal sends us into OT and into the next decade. They only need a field goal to tie it. This one you would think would be so short. Both teams running the ball, particularly Kansas City, and it's one of the longest we've had of the year. Tim Grunhard, the center, celebrates yeah. along with 80,000 of his closest friends. Well, that man made big plays the last two weeks, and tonight, in a game of a lot of big plays, the biggest 
is Roy Burris's interception and 83-yard run back when the Raiders were marching and had a chance to wrap the game up. That swung it. And I think Marty Schottenheimer is, is discussing what's offensive pass interference and what's not. Uh, he's lecturing, <laughs> as a matter of fact. It worked out just fine for Kansas City. He was discussing with Dick Green, the side judge, who made the call. He's probably also trying to figure out how many timeouts the Raiders have. After that first half debacle. Well, uh, maybe they'll get as many as they need. Yeah. <laughs> Both the Raiders and the Chiefs are chasing Denver, and Denver, because of their finish a year ago, has a rather easy schedule, and it's incumbent upon them to stay close to the Denver Broncos. And of course, Chiefs and the Raiders will meet on the final game of the season in Los Angeles. Lowry to kick it. Grady and Holland back to receive. 47 picks left. KC by three. Grady fumbles it, recovers it. Takes it to the 24. Fox stops with 43 seconds. Ooh. Tracy Rogers makes the hit. Lloyd Burris is there as well. I think Grady was fortunate he held on he bobbled it the first time and so often you see the fumble that follows up and he no control of it he was really hit the one guy i wouldn't want to be right now is the guy in the white shirt who draws the unlucky assignment of trying to keep Derek thomas from the quarterback that guy has to work and work hard On first down, Brown has it through his hands. Intercepted by Deron Terry. <laughs> Terry very wisely settles down, avoiding any possibility of a fumble, and a scuffle has broken out. And flags come down, all after the play. career interception for Deron Terry and he gets it off this but in and out of the hands of number 81 that's Timmy Brown after the play is over we have Paul Shetty personal foul number 76 from Los Angeles personal foul number 58 on the Kansas City Chiefs penalties off back first down Shell knew coming to Arrowhead that beating the Chiefs was going to be a tall order. They play much better here than they do on the road. The bad news for Kansas City is that five of their next seven are on the road. And they close the season at San Francisco and at the Raiders. A couple of kneel downs. The Raiders can stop the clock twice. This franchise here in Kansas City has just seen a remarkable turnaround since Carl Peterson and Marty Schottenheimer got here, and it just continues tonight. Raiders have elected not to prolong the agony. They can stop it twice, but that's all, and then the Chiefs can run the clock out, and they'll just get on the charger and head west. Take a week off and reconvene with Marcus Allen in uniform in Denver. And the Chiefs will take a week off as well, a half game back of Denver in the AFC West. And they will party hardy in Missouri tonight. And that's five wins out of the last six games for the Chiefs. Slipping only last week against Denver in a game that, well, with a couple of calls that had gone the other way on replay, and they could have won that one. Our thanks to our crew led by Kenny Wolf, Craig Janoff, George Joe, Malibu Kelly Hayes up in the booth here. And our entire Monday night crew. We'll talk to you next week from Philly. Until then, Al Michaels, Frank Isaac, Dan Deirdre, good night from Kansas City with a team rally to win.